Bible friends, this is Aunt Sil, and today I have a very special story for you called Sarah's Baby. Our memory verse is from John 15, 12, and it says, Love each other. Look, this is Sarah. Poor Sarah. She's very sad. Sarah is sad because she doesn't have any kids. Abraham is Sarah's husband. And he's very sad too for not having children with Sarah. But he's even sadder because Sarah is crying. Abraham loves Sarah very much. So he hugs her, he pats her back and tells her, Don't be sad, my darling. I don't want you to be sad. <laughs> Abraham. I wanted to have a baby for so long, a baby of my own, but now look at me, I'm too old. <laughs> oh. Sarah, I know you want a baby, I want a baby too. God said he would give us a son, but now we're so old. But don't cry, sweetheart. <laughs> One day. Abraham saw three strange men. They were walking towards his tent. They looked tired, so Abraham called. Hello, friends! You must be tired. Come, come and rest a while. Rest in the shade of this tree, and I will bring you something to eat. The man smiled and said, Thank you, thank you very much. And the three men sat down under the tree. Abraham hurried into his tent to talk to Sarah. Sarah, Sarah, hurry. We have company. Please bake some of those delicious bread of yours. Of course, my love. I'll do it right away. And Abraham went back to talk to his new friends. When the food was ready, Sarah called for Abraham. Abraham, the food is ready. So Abraham took it to the visitors. While they were eating, one man asked, Abraham, where's your wife? She's inside the tent, Abraham said. So the man said, I will come back and see you next year. And when I come back, your wife, Sarah, will have her very own baby boy. When Sarah heard the man, she could not contain herself, and she laughed. <laughs> Me? Having a baby? At this age? <laughs> the man heard Sarah and said, I heard Sarah laughing. She thinks she's too old to have a baby. But... Is anything too hard for the Lord? Then Abraham knew that man was really the Lord. He had come to visit Abraham. After that, the three men left. And one year later, it happened exactly as the Lord had predicted. Abraham and Sarah did have a baby boy. He was so cute. Look at the baby in Sarah's arms. They named him Isaac. His name means he laughs. Sarah and Abraham loved Isaac very much. Your family also loves you very much because people and families love one another. When Jesus in the family, happy, happy home. Happy, happy home, happy, happy home, when Jesus is in the family. Happy, happy home, happy, happy home, happy, happy home, happy, happy home. Let's thank God for our families. Dear God, Thank you so much for our happy home. Thank you for being in our family and for our loving family. In Jesus' name, amen. May you always remember that your family 
loves you very much. And Jesus loves you too. Hello boys and girls, this is Anfranita and I have a wonderful story for you called Sarah's Special Baby. Today's memory verse is from 1 John chapter 4, verse 7. It says, Let us love one another, for love comes from God. The message for today's story is people in Christian families love each other. Do you like surprises? What is the best surprise you've ever had? Something special. Something you didn't know would happen. God gave Abraham and Sarah something special. And Sarah laughed. Abraham sat quietly in the shade in front of his tent. It was too hot, especially for an old man like Abraham. He gazed out at the pastures in front of him. Why, there in the distance, there were three men walking. It was much too hot for them to be out in the middle of the day. Abraham scrambled to his feet and hurried to greet the men. Please stay with me for a while, he said as he bowed low before them. I will have some water brought to wash your dusty feet. Rest under this shady tree while I get you something to eat. Thank you, answered the men. It will be good to rest. Abram hurried to Sarah and asked her to make some fresh bread. Then he told his servant to get some food ready for their visitors. When the food was ready, Abraham served it himself. He stood nearby while the men ate. One of the men looked up at Abraham. Abraham didn't know it then, but that man was the Lord. Where is Sarah, your wife? The man asked. She's in the tent, Abram answered. Then the man said to Abraham, I will be back about this time next year. By then your wife will have a son of her very own. Sarah heard the man and she laughed. <laughs> I'm 90 years old, she thought to herself. That's much too old to have a baby. Then the Lord said to Abraham, Why did Sarah laugh? Why did she say I'm too old to have a baby? Is anything too hard for the Lord? No. I will return to you next year, and Sarah will be holding her own baby boy in her arms. Sarah put her hand over her mouth. <gasps> How could that man know her thoughts? There was only one way. That man must be the Lord. And what the Lord promised came true. Sarah did have a baby boy, a little baby boy of her very own. When he was born, Sarah told Abraham, I want to name this baby Isaac, because that means he laughs. The Lord has made me so happy, I want to laugh all the time, she said with a beautiful smile. And everyone who hears this story will laugh with me. I was much too old to have a baby, but the Lord gave me one. Praise the name of the Lord. The man was right. Nothing is too hard for the Lord. Hello everyone, it's Aunt Fernita, and we're studying Lesson 13, Lessons from a Worm. The message for this week is, I am happy when others join God's family. The memory verse is from 1 John chapter 3, verse 1. How great is the love the Father has lavished on us that we should be called children of God. And that is what we are. What's wrong? Mom wanted to know, looking at Caitlin's face as she and her brother Jeremy climbed into the car. I got a horrible grade on my spelling test again. And you said you were going to punish me if I got another bad grade in spelling. Caitlin sighed. Jeremy grinned to himself. He remembered when Mom had grounded him for not studying his spelling. I'm sorry, Caitlin, Mom said sympathetically. I'll help you study your words after supper. Jeremy began to feel hot and angry. 
Why wasn't Mom going to punish Caitlin like she said she would? Jonah was feeling much like Jeremy. Let's look in on him. Jonah's face grew red. He gritted his teeth. God hadn't destroyed the people he didn't like. God was not going to destroy the city of Nineveh after all. Jonah was so mad. I knew you would act like this, Jonah fussed at God. That's why I tried to run away to Tarshish. You're a loving and merciful God. You are patient and kind. I knew you would not destroy these terrible people. Just go ahead and kill me, Jonah shouted. It would be better if I died since nothing I predicted is going to happen. The Lord answered Jonah, Is it right for you to be angry like this? Maybe something will happen to Nineveh after all, Jonah thought. He decided to walk out where he could look down on the city and watch. It was very hot up on the hillside. Jonah made a little shelter with tree branches to protect himself from the sun. Then he sat down and waited. Then the most unusual thing began to happen. God made a vine with big green leaves to grow beside Jonah's shelter. Jonah stared at the plant. He had never seen anything like it. He had never seen anything grow up so fast. Up and up and up it went. The stem grew longer and thicker. Big leaves appeared and uncurled one after the other. The vine climbed all over Jonah's little shelter. It made a wonderfully shady place to sit. Jonah smiled to himself. It was nice not to be baking in the sun. He was very pleased with the plant. Jonah spent the whole night in his little shelter. Early the next morning, God prepared a worm that ate right through the stem of Jonah's plant. Of course, the plant died and it shriveled up. It could no longer protect Jonah from the sun's rays. The day got hotter and hotter and God sent a scorching wind to blow on Jonah. The wind blew and blew and the sun beat down. Jonah was miserable and angry. It would be better to die than to endure this, he exclaimed. Then God spoke to Jonah. Is it right for you to be angry because the plant died? Yes, Jonah shouted. You feel sorry about the vine, but you did nothing to make it grow. And a plant doesn't live very long anyway, God said. Nineveh has many people living there, plus all the animals. I made them all, and I love them. Don't I have more reason to feel sorry for them than you do to feel sorry for the vine that died? Jonah was confused. He didn't understand why God spared the people of Nineveh. But he knew about God's love and mercy. Years later, Jesus spoke of the work Jonah had done. This story shows us how loving and patient our God is. He wants us to follow His example, to be loving, kind, and patient to the people around us. He wants us to be happy when others join His family. friends, welcome again to Amazing Adventure. We are glad that you've joined us wherever you are. You might be in a home, maybe in a church location, maybe a school. We are so glad that you're part of the program. We would like to remind you that tonight this is number six of a 10-part series. So we've just passed the halfway mark. There's still many more important truths that we're going to discover on this adventure together. 
We've been speaking from evening to evening about these great lessons, brand new lessons designed for this program. You can order your lessons from the Amazing Facts Kids website. Tonight, we're going to be looking at a day with the King. Well, children, let's stand as we sing our theme song once more, Life is an Adventure. We invite the amazing adventure singers to come forward and lead us. Thank you very much. Let's remain standing as we have our scripture reading. Alexa is going to be reading to us. Our scripture reading this evening is where, Alexa? In Matthew chapter 5, verse 19. Whoever therefore breaks one of the least of these commandments and teaches man so shall be called least in the kingdom of heaven. But whoever does and teaches them, he shall be called great in the kingdom of heaven. The person doing our prayer this evening is Pastor Paul Hunt. He is the senior pastor here at the Richardson Church. Pastor Paul, thank you so much for opening your church up for us for this meeting. Absolutely my pleasure. We've kind of rearranged your platform just a little bit here, but we really appreciate all your help. Well, let's bow our heads and close our eyes as Pastor Paul leads us in prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, we are so grateful to you for this wonderful privilege of being able to join hands, as it were, across the world to study the word of Jesus. As Pastor Doug speaks, Heavenly Father, change these young lives to form into your will. This is our prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you very much. You children can take your seat. Pastor Paul, before you go, we've got something for you here as our thank you. Now, these are very rare. I think, Bonnie, there's only five of them. So this is a rare hat. There have been several people saying, can we have an amazing adventure cap? Well, this is for you. Thank you very much. Thank you so much. <laughs> we appreciate it. I'm going to invite Pastor Doug to come forward for our questions. We've had a lot of questions. Those who have been uh, sending their questions at the Amazing Facts website, thank you very much. We also have some video questions. So let's start with a video question tonight. Hi, my name is Calicia. I'm nine years old. And my question is, why is the devil trying so hard to get rid of us? Good question. Why is the devil trying so hard to hurt and get rid of us? After all, what did we ever do to him? You remember, the devil really hates God. He hates Jesus. He is consumed with pride and jealousy. The devil wanted Jesus' position. He wanted to be God. And he knows how much God loves you. See, the devil was there. He saw how much Jesus gave on the cross because the devil was there inspiring the people to torture and crucify Jesus. And he knows that God loves you. He knows that Jesus loves you. And he tries to hurt Jesus by getting you to sin. He tries to hurt Jesus by hurting you. If you've got a, a favorite uh, puppy or a toy or something that you really care about and someone wants to hurt you, and they wreck something you've created or something that you love, it hurts you by hurting something that you love. Well, that's why the devil does that to us, is because he just hates God. So, and, but the Lord will protect us if we ask him to. Amen. Well, Pastor Doug, we have a question that's come in. It says, uh, how are we supposed to know which voice is speaking to our hearts, the voice of Jesus or Satan? Very good. Well, sometimes you'll get impressions. You'll feel like you're getting an impression, you're sensing something in your mind or heart, and you might want to know, Lord, is that you talking to me, or is that another power? How can you know the difference? Well, first of all, 
the Holy Spirit will never ask you to do something different from the Holy Bible. If the Holy Bible is telling you, you know, not to uh, break God's commandments or what God's will is, and you feel like you're getting an impression to do something contrary to the Bible, that's not the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit will always work in cooperation with God's Word. And so sometimes you need to just look for providence of God's leading. Uh, you'll have a peace that you're doing what God says in His Word, and that's often the Holy Spirit talking to you inside. We generally know the difference. All right, we have another video question at this time. Hi, my name is Johnny. I'm six years old. My question is, why Jesus loves us more than our parents? Oh, well, that's a good question. Johnny's wanting to know, does Jesus love children more than our parents? Well, the Lord loves everybody. But let me ask you a question. Would you rather have a dog or a puppy? puppy. How many would rather have a puppy? Let me see your hands. Well, isn't a puppy a dog? What's the difference between a puppy and a dog? Younger. They're younger. They're, they're cuter. Would you rather have a cat or a kitty? kitty? You know, the problem is we've got a lot of children in the bachelor's home, and they always want puppies and kitties, but then they turn into dogs and cats. And so, you know, the Lord really loves and he protects the young. And the Lord is the one who made us feel this attraction for people when they're young, and even animals when they're little. They're so cute. And so the Lord loves everybody, but he especially protects the children because they're more innocent and they're a little more defenseless. We have another question that somebody wrote in. Is it true that the Bible says that man can only live to 120 years? No, the, you're probably getting that from Genesis chapter 6 where God said to Noah that there would be 120 years before the flood. God said, my spirit will not always strive with man. His days will be 120 years. But the average life now for people, the Bible says, is three score in ten. Who knows what a score is? Score is an old English word for 20. So three score is how much? 60. And 10? 70. 70 is an average. Matter of fact, many parts of the world, 70 is the average lifespan. Now, now with modern medicine and good health practices, you can live to 100. But uh, that was just given in the Bible as an average. Before the flood, oh, I'm not going to tell you. We're talking about that another night. All right, very good. We have one more video question, I think, this evening. Hi, my name is Mikey McNamara. I'm nine years old, and my question is, did Jesus baptize anybody? Good question. We have a lesson coming on the subject of baptism, and he's asking, did Jesus baptize anybody? Well, we know John the Baptist baptized people and probably John's disciples, but you can read in the Bible in the Gospel of John chapter 4, verse 1 and 2, that Jesus baptized many, but not personally. His disciples did the baptizing. And so Jesus may have baptized someone, maybe he even baptized some of his apostles that followed him, but there's no record in the Bible, so we're not sure. But we know that Jesus' apostles did a lot of baptizing when he was teaching. Well, well, thank you very much, Pastor Doug. That's it for our Bible questions this evening. Again, if you have a Bible question, you can go to the Amazing Facts Kids website and type in your Bible question. We'll try and get it on the air. Our Amazing Adventure singers are bringing us our special song this evening, and I've enjoyed the music from evening to evening. The song is entitled, Always the Same.
Good job. That's a beautiful song, isn't it? We're learning some new songs during this series. Well, I want to welcome everybody here at the Richardson Church. We're so thankful for your faithfulness in coming and joining us on this amazing adventure. Also, our friends who are watching all these locations around the world. Now I hear there's over 2,700. Is that right, Pastor Ross? Wow, praise the Lord. Some are joining along the way. Some schools started on Monday because they recorded the program and they're doing it each day in their school and it'll take them, of course, two weeks to do it. And we're hoping that you continue to use these programs. They're great for VBS, for Pathfinders, for Sabbath school, for uh, church schools, all kinds of programs. We're all on this adventure together to get to heaven. Now, have you been doing your lessons? I hope you're getting your lessons as you leave the program. The lessons help give additional material, some great amazing facts in the lessons and stories. Tonight's lesson is dealing with the subject, a day with the king, a day with the king. You know, I'm always uh, interested in the Bible stories and I especially marvel at the story in the Bible about Solomon. When Solomon was king, Israel was at its zenith of glory. You know, the Bible says there was so much gold and silver in the kingdom that silver wasn't even counted as being worth anything. It was like stones because everyone was so wealthy. There was so much prosperity. Solomon was the greatest and richest and wisest king that ever reigned in Israel. And the, the word about his wisdom spread everywhere. And people came from all different parts of the world. One special queen came all the way to Jerusalem, probably traveled hundreds of miles with a caravan filled with gold, and she gave all these gifts to Solomon just to spend time and listen to his wisdom, to spend that kind of time with the king. Wouldn't you have liked to have seen Israel during the time of Solomon? You know, our family one time went to Washington, D.C., and we, we got permission to visit the White House. And that was kind of exciting, going through the White House. Matter of fact, one of the security guards there, the Secret Service people with the earpiece, you know, he went like this. And I thought that maybe one of our kids were misbehaving or touching a valuable painting. And I came over and I thought, oh no, I'm in trouble now. What did we do? He said, we enjoy your programs. <laughs> and I thought, oh, that's exciting. People in the White House are watching. But you know, it was fun seeing the White House, but we didn't get to see the president. If I had a chance to either see the White House or to talk to the president, I'd rather spend time with the president. You know, I heard a few years ago in 2006, Queen Elizabeth, for her 80th birthday, she opened up Buckingham Palace and she invited children from all over the British Empire to come and help celebrate her birthday with her. How would you like to have a day with a king or a queen or a president? All special personal attention. Be able to come and sit at their table and eat with them and talk with them. Wouldn't that be exciting? Well, you know you do. You do have a chance. The Bible says that God, not the King of England or the Queen of England or the President of the United States, but the God, the King of the whole universe, the whole cosmos, He loves you so much, He wants to have a special appointment with you every week. You know what that's called? The Sabbath. It's one of the Ten Commandments that a lot of people have forgotten about that's very important to the Lord. Now let me tell you why. You live in something called time. 
We live in time. How many of you have a watch on? Some of you got a watch on? Your watch doesn't change time. It tells you how much time there is. You remember the illustration with the candles last night? I'm trying to illustrate that we've only got so much time in our lives. When two people fall in love, it's because they spend time together. And it's so important for us to have time with God so our love for God will grow. The devil does not want us to have our special time with God. And so he's got one of the Ten Commandments under attack. And it's the fourth commandment. It's called the Sabbath day. Well, let's get to question number one. We'll talk about more of this as we get into the lesson. What day does Jesus, the King of the universe, want me to spend with him? The answer is in Exodus, this is the Ten Commandments, chapter 20, verse 8 and verse 11. Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. The Lord blessed the Sabbath day and hallowed it. That means he made this day holy. Now, is the Sabbath supposed to be an exciting day, a happy day, or a sad day? If you got to spend a day with the king, is that exciting? Yes. The Bible says in Isaiah 58, we should call the Sabbath a delight. When something's delightful, is that exciting? You know what else the Sabbath's for? Do people need rest? Not only do you need rest every night, do your parents have to sometimes tell you to go to bed when you don't want to go to bed and you want to stay up? Why do they tell you to go to bed? Because they love you and they know you need rest. And if you don't get rest, sometimes you don't do well at school the next day. Maybe you're crabby or you, you get tired from doing your chores and you need rest. Well, not only does your body need physical rest, your soul, your spirit, your mind needs spiritual rest. And God has outlined in his word a time every week when we put aside mowing the lawn, we put aside uh, our homework. You don't have to go to the mall and watch mom shop. It's a time to rest and to spend time with the Lord and with your family and a time to recharge your battery spiritually. Number two, which day is the Sabbath? And does it matter? The Bible says, Exodus 20, I heard many of you knew the answer to that. Say it with me. The Seventh day is the Sabbath of the Lord your God. Now, how many days in a month? 30. About 30. Do you know why? Because much of the world, all these civilizations, they had a month with about 27 to 30 days because that's how long it takes for the, the moon to go through a complete cycle from full moon back to full moon. That's where you get the word month from moon. How many days in a year? <laughs> Some of you got that one wrong. 365. You know why? Because it takes 365 days. Matter of fact, I got a world back here. It takes 365 days for the earth to go completely around the sun. I may use this again later. We'll see what happens. How many days in a week? Why? Anything in the sun, moon, or stars that gives us a seven-day week? Everywhere in the world, the countries have a seven-day week. Why? There's only one place you can trace a seven-day week to. It's not in the stars, it's in the Word. Even in countries like China where they don't believe in the Bible, in some of the communist countries and countries of other religions, they still have a seven-day week. It's because in the Bible, God created the world in seven days and all the nations of the world adopted that. And God set aside one day as a special day of rest, and it's the seventh day. Let's read about this. Now, in Mark 16, verse 1 and 2, we're going to find out what day is the seventh day. Now, when the Sabbath was passed, this is talking about after Jesus died and he was r raising from the dead, very early in the morning on the first day of the week, the Bible tells us they came to the tomb when the sun had risen. Now, who knows what day of the week did Jesus rise from the dead? Sunday. Sunday. That's right. That's the first day of the week. If you look in any dictionary, it'll say Sunday, the first day of the week. If you look on a normal calendar, it'll show first day of the week, Sunday. Jesus rose Sunday morning, or what we would call the morning of the first day of the week. 
What day then is the seventh day? Saturday. Matter of fact, if you don't believe Pastor Doug, you can look in the encyclopedia, you can look in the dictionary. It'll say seventh day, Saturday, seventh day of the week. Now God says that He's blessed the seventh day and He wants us to remember the seventh day, but a lot of people are forgetting about that and that's a very important truth the Lord wants us to learn because the more time we spend with God, the more we know Him. The more we know Him, the more we love Him. The more we love Him, the better we serve Him. The devil does not want you to know the truth about this because he doesn't want you to have the power of love for the Lord. You know something interesting? In 105 different languages of the world, the way you say the seventh day of the week is the word for Sabbath day. Matter of fact, uh, I speak in Russian, it's subota. Who here speaks Spanish? We got some of you speak Spanish. How do you say Saturday in Spanish? Sabado. Oh, a lot of you knew that. Sabado, right? And it's not only that way in Spanish, in English, or rather in Russian, and many different languages, but 105 languages, their word for Saturday is the equivalent of Sabbath day. Matter of fact, in Persian, their word for the seventh day is the pleasantest day of the week. And so this goes all the way back to the Tower of Babel when everybody kept the same day, but something happened. Question number three, where did the Sabbath come from and how long has it been a special day for our king? We're going to go to the Bible for our answer. All the way back, you got your Bibles? All the way back in the very beginning of the Bible, who knows what the first book of the Bible is? Genesis, Genesis in chapter one of the Bible. You can read, of course, verse one. In the beginning, you can read it off the screen if you don't have a Bible with you, those who are watching. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Now you go to chapter 2, and it says in verse 2, And on the seventh day, God ended His work which He had done. And so, right at the very beginning, God established the Sabbath. That was part of God's perfect plan. Now, did Adam and Eve, when God made the Sabbath, was there any sin in the world? That was part of God's perfect plan long before sin and God never changed it. It's still part of His perfect plan. And it says that God rested on the seventh day from all His work which He had done. Did God rest because He was tired? Does God ever get tired? We'd be in trouble if God got tired and didn't take care of us. God rested as an example for you and me. He spent special time with Adam and Eve on that time. Then the Lord did something else. Then God blessed the seventh day and He sanctified it because in it He rested from all His work which God created and made. Now I want you to notice something. Three times in the beginning of the Bible it says the seventh day, the seventh day, the seventh day. When God does something three times like that, that's a symbol. The number three is a symbol for God like that. Because you got God the Father, God the Son, God the Spirit. The angels say, holy, holy, holy. God says the seventh day, the seventh day, the seventh day. In the beginning of the Bible, in the end of the Bible, there's a number for the beast. Who knows what that number is for the beast? Three, six, six. six, 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 that's right. Front of the Bible, God says the seventh day, the seventh day, the seventh day. In the end of the Bible, it's going six, six, six. That's the number for man. The number for God is a special number of seven. And so this is a very important thing for us to learn. Number four, does God want everyone to worship Him on the Sabbath day? And what do the Ten Commandments say? First of all, Jesus says in Mark chapter 2, verse 27, I hope you can all read this, the Sabbath was made for Jews. Is that what that says? Isn't that how you spell Jews? M-A-N. No. You remember Jesus was a Jew and He preached to Jewish people. And some folks have said, well, since Moses was a Jew and he wrote the Ten Commandments, the Sabbath is just for Jews. Did Jesus say it was for Jews or for man, meaning mankind, meaning humans? How many humans here? Did anyone not raise their hand? <laughs> Any aliens here? No. <laughs> I knew you'd do that. All right, let's go back and let's read what the Ten Commandments say. Exodus 20, verse 8. Now listen, let's be reverent. Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. You know why God said remember? Because He knew that people would forget. 
Do you know that God didn't say, remember the Sabbath day and, and make it holy? It already is holy. He said, we keep it holy. We can't make a day holy. God says it is holy. I want you to keep it the way I made it. Six days you should labor and do all of your work. But the seventh day is the Sabbath of the Jewish people. Is that what it says? No. Oh, no, it says the Sabbath of the Lord, your God. In it you shall not do any work. You or your son, he wants the children to rest, or your daughter, nor your male or female servants, nor your cattle, nor the stranger. He even wants the animals. Back then they used to ride the horses to pull the plow and the donkeys and the, and the oxen and the goats, and they all got to rest. So if the Lord even wants the animals to rest, do you think the Sabbath is just for Jews or is it for all the world? Nor the cattle, nor the stranger who is within your gates. For, here's why, in six days the Lord made the heavens and the earth and the sea and all that is in them, and he rested the seventh day. Wherefore, the Lord blessed the Sabbath day and hallowed it. God did something very special to this day. He didn't do it any other day. Now, I'm so thankful that uh, the Bachelor family is able to join me. I'd like to invite... Stephen, if you could grab that table for me. Stephen Batchelor is here. And if Mrs. Batchelor could come up front, maybe she's going to help me with an illustration. And uh, I'd like to demonstrate something for you here that uh, will help you to understand that there is a difference in days. And I'll let you get... This is Mrs. Batchelor. Can you all say, hi, Mrs. Batchelor? Hi, Mrs. Batchelor. Okay, this is Stephen Batchelor. Can you say, hi, Stephen? I wanted him to help even though he's a little older than the average age for the uh, Amazing Adventure Kids here. Okay, so here we've got seven cups. And I'm going to ask Mrs. Batchelor to help me with this illustration because I'm afraid that I would spill something here. Let me just see. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Just want to double check. Okay. Now each one of these represents a day of the week. And on the first day, let's put a little water in the first day. Who knows what God made the first day? What do you make? Light. First day, God made light. All right, on the second day, God, he separated the atmosphere, the land, and the, or the, uh, the clouds and the land, and he created the atmosphere. The third day, God created the land, and he made the vegetation. On the fourth day, God made the sun, the moon, and the stars. On the fifth day, God made the creatures in the sea and the creatures in the air, meaning the fish and the birds. On the sixth day, God made the, uh, the animals, the land animals, and he also made man. And as the crowning act of his creation, God made woman, woman. right? Okay, but God wasn't done. How many days in the week? Seven. What did God make on the seventh day? He didn't make. He didn't make anything you can touch? He didn't make anything you can see? No. Oh, but he did. God did something special to the seventh day. It says that he made it. That must have been magic water, huh? The Bible says God rested on that day. God blessed that day. And God sanctified that day. That day is different than every other day, isn't it? Can you see the difference? And he's got something very sweet for you in that day that he doesn't want you to miss. But the devil wants you to forget about it. Now, I haven't thought about how we're going to get rid of all this. Here, you can, you can pour that all back in there, dear. Okay. Uh, except this one. Okay. <laughs> and I'm going to go on with my lesson here. All right. Now, is the Sabbath just for Jews? Listen to what it says in Isaiah chapter 56, verse 6 and 7. Also, the sons of the foreigner... These are people who aren't even part of the Jewish nation. That means children from all over the world, too, who join themselves to the Lord to serve Him and to love the name of the Lord. It says, to be His servants, everyone who keeps from defiling the Sabbath and holds fast my covenant. This is for people everywhere. Even them I will bring to my holy mountain and make them, can you read that word? Make them joyful in my house of prayer. He says, the sons of the stranger, foreigners, people from all over the world. The Sabbath was for everybody, and it still is. Now, some people thought, well, didn't Moses 
Didn't he write the Ten Commandments and didn't he give it to the Jewish nation? Didn't the Sabbath begin with Moses? No, Sabbath goes back to Adam and Eve. And I can prove that the Sabbath day actually began long before they got to Mount Sinai and God wrote it with his finger and spoke it with his voice. You remember when Moses brought the children of Israel across the Red Sea and uh, they went into the wilderness and they had no food and the people got hungry. So what did God do? The manna came down from heaven. Matter of fact, six days a week manna came down from heaven. They'd gather it and they'd eat it. And I suppose those children had fun going out and just picking their, their breakfast up off the, the, the ground and the little bushes out there, these little round things that tasted like honey wafers. And then they would eat them. But on the seventh day, there wasn't any. They'd get twice as much on Friday. Well, some of them went out looking for it on the seventh day and they didn't find it. Let me read this to you. Exodus 16, verse 25. Then Moses said, eat that today, for today is a Sabbath to the Lord. Today you will not find it in the fields. They would gather twice as much of the manna on Friday and there would not be any of it on the Sabbath day. Now notice something. In Exodus chapter 16, that's when you find the story about the manna and God is talking about the Sabbath as though they know what it is. He's not given them the Ten Commandments yet. The Ten Commandments don't come until Exodus chapter 20. And so I think it's very clear from the Bible that uh, the Sabbath goes all the way back. All right, question number five. Why do so many people worship God on Sunday now? Have the Ten Commandments been changed? Does the Lord change? Didn't the Bible say, I am the Lord, I change not? Jesus Christ the same yesterday, today, and forever in the book of Hebrews. But many people haven't heard the truth. I remember I grew up, and you know what? My mom is Jewish, and I should have known about the Seventh-day Sabbath, but when I first became a Christian, I never heard of it. And a lot of dear Christian people don't know about it. Some pastors do know, but they're pretending they don't see it. It's a very plain truth. Matter of fact, there's a church here that keeps the Sabbath day. There's another denomination across the street that keeps the Sabbath day. More and more churches around the world are learning the truth about the Sabbath. Before Jesus comes back, a lot of people are returning to the Bible truth. It says in Ezekiel 22, verse 26, Her priests have violated my law and profaned my holy things. Even some pastors and priests are hiding their eyes from it. It says they've hidden their eyes from my Sabbaths. God foretold in the Bible a long time ago that this was going to happen. You know why? Sometimes it's easier to give a person some money than to give them your time. There are some dads, it's easier to give their children a birthday present than to give them a day. And God says, if you'll show me that you love me, give me your time. Do you know what life is made of? Life is made of time. And every Sabbath when we give the Lord our time, we're giving Him our life. I believe He gives us more life and longer life when we give Him our time. You know why so many people die in the world today? It's called stress. And people get all tight and they get indigestion and they get heartburn because there's so many pressures and so many worries and a lot of it's because people have forgotten about the Sabbath day. And God says, give me your time and rest. I'll help you get stronger again. It's like after a good night's sleep, you wake up, you feel really good and you got lots of energy. God wants us to have spiritual energy too. Matthew chapter 15. Jesus said a lot of people are keeping other days, but it's just a tradition. Why do you also transgress the commandment of God because of your tradition? That's Matthew 15 verse 3. Some people are breaking the commandments of God and keeping other days when God says they should keep the seventh day holy, and it does matter. Did God bless the first day of the week? Does it say anywhere in the Bible He blessed the first day? Does it say anywhere in the Bible He sanctified the first day or made it holy? No, God has taken one day and He's made it a special day. He says, my covenant I will not break nor alter the word that has gone out of my mouth. Now I'll tell you what, not only are two of the bachelor boys here today, but Pastor Ross has a son. He's got two of his boys with him, but I'm going to bring Justin up for this illustration. I hope you guys don't mind. And I'm going to ask him to go into the mystery box here and see if you find something that looks like a party could happen. Go ahead, open up all the way. What do we got there? Let's go ahead, let's pull that out of there. See if you can get that out of there in one piece. 
All right, you can hang on here. I'll tell you what, let's do this, if you don't mind. Just leave that right there for a second. Go ahead, let's take that, that's good. You guys wanna have a quick party? Yeah. All right, let's go take that, let's see. Matter of fact, we might even have a few extra ones, we do. All right, let's see now, just a second here. We're not, we're not quite done. I wanna have a party here. Let me get this thing over my glasses. There we go. All right. Now, I'm sure that's all natural ingredients. Um, you got talking to my tie here, Justin. When is your birthday? September 16th. What's today? I tell you what, today we're going to celebrate your birthday. Let me see here. Let me get this. Hang on a second. Oh, come on. Don't do that to me. <laughs> Wow, it's a flamethrower. <laughs> All right. Go ahead, blow your gazoo there. Blow hard. You want to celebrate? Blow hard for a second. Okay. That'll work. All right, now, that's, that's good. Now we're going to sing Happy Birthday to Justin real quick, okay? Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Justin. Happy birthday to you. All right, you know what that means? Now, all right, all right, all right. I trust you guys. Now that, what's the date today? September 17th. When is his birthday? So from now on, his birthday is going to be September 17th. Is that okay? No. But we just sang to you and we just blew our gazoos and you got the balloon and it says happy birthday so we're going to vote to change your birthday to the 17th. No. Why not? Because, my, because I wasn't born today. What day were you born? The 16th. So, so no matter how loud we sing it won't change that, huh? Nope. Your mom, she won't understand? Jean, can we just change it now to the 17th? Officially we'll just write it up here, we all sang? Yeah. All right, you get the point? You can't change it. It doesn't matter what tradition does. You want to blow that out? Say a prayer and blow it out? Just pray it doesn't catch you. Okay. You can take that with you. Back to your dad. You can take Yeah, don't blow on it. All right, let's collect our gazoos. <laughs> oh, I knew I was forgetting something. All right, you see, now just because everybody decides, well, everybody's now keeping the first day as the Sabbath or, you know, in the Muslim world, they keep the sixth day, Friday is the Sabbath. Does that change God's law? You mean, can people all vote to change the law of God? Will it change the Ten Commandments? God doesn't change. Remember, what needs changing? We need change. God is perfect. What is a Christian? Question number six. A Christian follows Jesus, right? Did Jesus keep the seventh day Sabbath? We got several verses here. Luke chapter 4, verse 16. As his custom was, that means his behavior, his pattern, he went into the church, the synagogue, on the Sabbath day, and he stood up to read the scripture. What is a custom? Is a custom something you do one time or many times? Many times. A custom means it's a habit, your pattern. Ever since Jesus was a little boy, he went to the synagogue every Sabbath day, and he'd read the Bible, and he'd pray, and he was with his family. That was his custom. The Bible never says that Jesus gave that up either. And again, Mark chapter 6, verse 2, And when the Sabbath had come, he began to teach in the synagogue. Jesus went to church every Sabbath day. What day of the week did he go? First day, second day, third day, fourth day, fifth day, sixth day, or? Seventh day. Seventh day. Why seventh day? That's the day that he blessed and made holy. Now, let me get you to think about something. Who is it that wrote the Ten Commandments? Jesus did. With his own finger. See, Jesus is God the Son. And it's his creation. The Bible says in First John, or in the Gospel of John, all things that were made were made by him. Nothing was made without him that was made, including the law of God. So when Jesus made the Sabbath, it was perfect. Why would he change it? Question number seven. Should we keep Sunday as the Sabbath day because Jesus rose on that day? No. Now, is it important that Jesus rose on Sunday? It's important that Jesus rose. Who knows what day of the week did Jesus die on the cross? 
Friday, that's good. Is that an important day? Wasn't that important? Yes. And what day did Jesus have? What evening was it when he had the Last Supper? Thursday, Thursday night, what we would call Thursday night. Is that important too? Yes. Jesus did important things on many days. But where in the Bible does he tell us that that makes it a new Sabbath day? He doesn't. The only day that Jesus set up as the Sabbath is the seventh day. So, let's go on. Should we keep Sunday because Jesus rose on that day? Did the apostles worship on Sunday? Let's find out what the Bible says. Acts 17, in verse 2, Then Paul, as his custom was, he went to them for three Sabbaths, and he reasoned with them out of the Scriptures. Paul is the Apostle Paul. Paul didn't become an apostle until years after Jesus died. So long after Jesus died, the apostles are still keeping the seventh-day Sabbath. And again, it says, he reasoned in the synagogue every Sabbath, not just with Jews. He persuaded both Jews and Greeks. Now, I'm sort of half and half. I'm half Gentile. My father was a Baptist and my mother was a Jew. And uh, so I can speak from both perspectives on this. Again, Acts chapter 13, verse 42. So when the Jews went out of the synagogue, it says the Gentiles. A Gentile is anybody who's not a Jew. The Gentiles begged that these words might be preached to them the next Sunday. What does it say? The next what? Even the Gentiles, the non-Jews, knew that Paul was going to be in the church, the synagogue, on the seventh day, not on Sunday. So they said, well, we know what day the Sabbath is. Can you talk to us again next Sabbath? They didn't say next Sunday. And this is long after Jesus had risen and gone to heaven. Matter of fact, Jesus prophesying about the end of time Listen to what the Lord said. There might be a time when we've got to run for our lives because of the tribulation and problems. He said, pray that your flight, now flight there doesn't mean your American Airlines flight. It means flight means like you run and you flee for your life. Pray that your flight may not be in the winter or on the Sabbath day. Did Jesus looking down in prophecy know that God's people would still be keeping the Sabbath? This is important to the Lord because he loves us and he wants time with us. The Bible promises blessings to those who keep the Sabbath. Don't you want that blessing? The, the day is not cursed. God says he blessed the day. And some people come to, they come to church every week and they miss the blessings. If you turn away your foot from the Sabbath, I'm in Isaiah 58, 13, from doing your pleasure on my holy day. It's not a day for doing our regular activities. It's a holy day for God. He says... Therefore, you'll call the Sabbath a delight. God calls the Sabbath my holy day. And again, Jesus says in Mark chapter 2, verse 28, Therefore, the Son of Man is Lord of the Sabbath. God tells us that He is the Lord of the Sabbath day. It's very important to Him. Question number eight. If God didn't change the seventh day Sabbath to Sunday, then how did this happen? Why are there so many people around the world that go to church on the first day of the week on Sunday and they call it the Sabbath, but it's not the day that God set aside? Well, you look in history, it'll tell you. Jesus knew this was going to happen. He knew that there would be a sinister power that would try to change it. Daniel 7.25 said this beast power would think or intend to change times and laws. Do you know there's only one of the Ten Commandments that is both a law and a time which commandment is that? The fourth commandment about the Sabbath day. The Sabbath's a time and it's a law. And the Bible foretold this was going to happen. There was a Roman emperor that came along by the name of Constantine. And you know, for a while there in Rome, Christianity was illegal. If you were a Christian, you had to hide your religion. It was very unpopular. Christians were being fed to the lions. Some of the Roman emperors tried to kill all the Christians. They would throw them in the arena to uh, be trampled by elephants, or they'd burn them to death. Many of the Christians developed cities underground called catacombs because they had to hide. The religion was against the law. But it was so true, and it was changing hearts, and it gave them such peace that it kept growing and spreading. More and more people wanted to be Christians. Christ Christians were happy. They had peace. So Constantine became emperor, and the Romans in, in uh, Rome, the pagans, they worshiped the sun and the moon and the stars. That's where you get the word Sunday. That was the day they worshiped the sun. Monday was the day they worshiped the, who knows? The moon. 
Saturday was a day for worshiping the planet Saturn. Thursday was the day of Thor, the god of thunder. They had all these different pagan gods they worshiped. In the Bible, the days don't have names like that. They're numbered. First day, sixth, second day, third day, fourth day, fifth day. The sixth day, Friday, is called the preparation day, and then the Sabbath day. Well, Constantine's empire was split between pagans and Christians, and he said, look, Christians aren't hurting anybody. We may as well legalize the religion. So he made a law legalizing Christianity, and he is the one who established Sunday as a day of worship. This is right from the Encyclopedia Britannica. That was not written by Pastor Doug or by Pastor Doug's church. It's written by people who are just writing history. It says, the earliest recognition of the observance of Sunday is a constitution of Constantine, this Roman emperor, in 321 A.D. That means A.D. means Anno Domini, or after the death of Jesus. 321 years after Jesus, they started changing it, little by little, and the Jews were not popular. And some of the Christians said, we don't want to worship the same day as the Jews. We want to do something new and different. Let's start worshiping on the same day the pagans worship the sun. And little by little, over hundreds of years, many of the Christians gave up the day God blessed and started observing the day that was blessed and worshipped by the pagans, worshipping the sun. And you can also read in Matthew chapter 15, verse 9, a lot of people might be very sincere, but it says here, Jesus said, in vain they worship me, teaching as doctrines the commandments of men. Some people are teaching man-made things, but they're not God's will, and it hurts the Lord. So can we know what day that day is? Luke chapter 23. The day Jesus died was called the preparation day, or who knows what day that is? Friday. And the Sabbath drew near. And then it says in the Bible, from evening to evening we're to celebrate our Sabbaths. All right, let me see. You're real close. Mitchell, come up, come here. I'm sorry. All right. You remember this light? Yeah. Go over there a little ways, further back by the guitar. Aim the light at the world. All right. Here we are in Texas. See the tape? Can you all see? Maybe they have on the screen. As the world turns, when the sun goes down, you're in the dark part right here. You can see over here, it's getting into the light part here. When a day ends is at sundown. This is when a new day begins. As the sun comes up, the day's already been going. You're supposed to keep the Sabbath when it comes to you. When it's Sabbath here in Texas, it may not be other parts of the world, but you keep the Sabbath when it comes to you because the world is always turning like this and the sun's shining on it. That's a pretty bright light, isn't it? You enjoying that? <laughs> okay. I just wanted to give you a little visual to help understand that. The Bible says from evening to evening you celebrate your Sabbath. Good job, Mitchell. I appreciate that. So, do you know when Jesus died? Jesus died right about sundown. You want to hear something amazing? Jesus even kept the Sabbath in his death. See, Jesus spent his life working to save humanity. When he died on the cross, you know one of the last things he said? He said, it is finished. And then he died. He said, Father, into your hands I commend my spirit. And he died. He went to sleep. And he rested through the Sabbath. He kept the Sabbath even in his death. And then he rose Sunday morning, not to rest. He rose Sunday morning to continue his work for us as high priest. That's how important it is to Jesus. And the disciples would not finish embalming or wrapping up Jesus' body Friday afternoon. They said, the sun is going down. We're not quite done mummifying or wrapping up his body. We'll come back Sunday morning. Because the disciples knew that would not make Jesus happy to continue working on the Sabbath day, even that labor of love. So it says, they returned and prepared spices and fragrant ointments. Then they rested. Notice here, they rested the Sabbath according to the commandment. Was the commandment important to Jesus? Was it important to his disciples? Now on the first day of the week, they came to the tomb and praise the Lord, he had risen. He began his work in heaven as our high priest and he's alive there watching over us right now. So the preparation day is Friday. That's sometimes people call it Good Friday. Sabbath, Jesus slept, he rested in the tomb. He rose after the Sabbath on Sunday, the first day. 
Saturday is the seventh day. That's the Sabbath day. There's no question about it. No calendar change has affected that. What makes the Sabbath so special to God and to us? The Bible says the Lord blessed the Sabbath day and he howled it. It's his holy day. It's the day he wants us to remember him. Did you know that we're even going to keep the Sabbath in heaven? You aware of that? Question number 10. Even in heaven, we're going to keep the Sabbath day after Jesus comes. For instance, how many know, did, they, did Adam and Eve keep the Sabbath in the Garden of Eden? Yeah. Yes. Did Moses and the children of Israel keep the Sabbath in the wilderness? Yeah. Yes. All through the Old Testament, did Jesus and the apostles keep the Sabbath? Yeah. Yes. The Bible tells us that even in the new heavens and the new earth that God is going to make, it says, for as the new heavens and the new earth that I will make shall remain before me, says the Lord, so shall your descendants and your name remain. And it shall come to pass that from one Sabbath to another shall all flesh come and worship before the Lord. Even in heaven we're going to come and worship God. And guess who the preacher is going to be there? Jesus. And nobody's going to sleep during the church service then, right? You know, I heard about a boy named Bobby who one day was playing with his grandfather's special gold watch, little gold watch that had a flip case on it. And his mom said he had to go feed the chickens. So he stuck the watch inside his shirt pocket and he went out to feed the chickens. He forgot it was there. And he loved to jump in the hay. So he was jumping from the loft down into the piles of hay and he was playing and pretty soon oh, he thought, where's grandpa's watch? His gold watch. What am I going to do? And he looked all through the hay and he couldn't find it and he was frantic. He thought, oh, I'll be in so much trouble. That was grandpa's special watch. He got it when he retired from the railroad. I'm in big trouble now. And he was frantically looking all through the hay and digging around and he couldn't find it. Finally, he got on his knees and he was sobbing. He, he prayed and he said, oh, Lord, I'm sorry I was careless with Grandpa's watch. Please help me know where it is. Help me find it. And then while he was on his knees quietly praying, he heard tick, 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 tick. And what do you think it was? When he was finally quiet, he heard it. And he had to be real still. And he started sifting through the hay, and he'd be quiet, and he'd listen. And he'd sift a little more, and he narrowed it down until pretty soon he dug aside, and it tick, 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 and it was real loud. And he found the watch. But he had been so frantic looking before, he couldn't find that treasure. You know, sometimes the devil tries to keep us so frantic. Some homes today are just so much noise, and the television's always going, and the video games, and there's just always things happening. And the devil wants to create so much noise, we can't hear the Lord speaking to us. God has given us a day of rest to be still and to hear his voice, to recharge our batteries, to get a blessing to prepare us for heaven. Every Sabbath is a little bit of heaven here now. And God wants you to have that blessing, friends. He wants you to have that rest on that holy special day. How many of you would like to have that blessing that God has in the Sabbath day? To hear his voice and to be ready for his coming. Let's pray now and ask him to enjoy that. Jesus said, come to me and I will give you rest. That's what the Sabbath is all about. Let's pray. Father in heaven, we're so thankful for the truth that you love us and you want us to love you. That's why you've given us this holy day to set aside time to get to know you better and love you more. And as we love you more, Lord, to serve you better. I pray you'll bless all those who are watching and especially the children, that they'll love that special time, a day with a king that you provided for them. Fill them with your spirit. Continue to pour out your spirit and your blessings in this series that there might be a great revival of young people to serve you. We ask this now in Jesus' name. Amen.
how do you view your fellow Christians? Do you draw philosophical or theological lines between yourself and others? Do you try to love all people like Jesus? Or do you search for things that would divide you? Israel as a nation had a lot in their history to be proud of. No other people group on earth had ever been given such privileges by God as they had enjoyed. But there was a lot there that wasn't so wonderful as well. Between Egyptian slavery and Canaanite harassment and Babylonian and Persian, Greek and Roman conquests, all of which had tested their trust in God to the core, sadly, God's people had become self-confident and arrogantly exclusive. And this had never actually been God's intention for them. When one goes through pain and pressure like they did, it's natural to begin to see outsiders as a threat. And for Israel, that's exactly what happened. But Paul wanted to explain to his Hebrew friends that in Christ, things were different. Paul wanted them to recognize that all men were their brothers and that the salvation that Jesus secured was for the whole world, for everyone. In his letter to the Hebrews, Paul is encouraging his readers to join not some offshoot of the Jewish faith, but to step into the community of faith that God had always intended to raise up, to share the powerful news of what the life, death, and resurrection of the Messiah would mean for the entire world. Throughout the book of Hebrews, Paul pays tribute to the faith of their ancestors in Israel's past. Paul does not discard Moses' law, but he explains that Jesus lived by it. He does not discard the temple sacrifices as worthless, but he explains how Jesus is the Lamb of God to which they all pointed forward to. Paul expresses how the Gentiles around the world were invited to be heirs along with Israel to what Jesus had accomplished. In the book of Hebrews, what Paul shared helps us to understand with fresh meaning and depth the beauty of Jesus. And he does this in a language that anyone could understand. It's no wonder that someone thought it worth writing down and praise God that they did. I pray that you have been blessed by our study of the book of Hebrews this quarter. May God bless you in a powerful way and may your name be written there in Hebrews Hall of Faith that when Jesus comes very soon, we'll all look up with smiles and joy on our faces and in our hearts ready to go home to heaven with him and with each other for all eternity. Miss Sayandra, happy Sabbath and welcome to Hope Sabbath School, an in-depth interactive study of the Word of God. We've come to our 13th Sabbath. It is our 13th lesson and the final lesson for this uh, quarter, uh, a, st a study of, of the book of Hebrews entitled In These Last Days. And I believe that we've been blessed abundantly throughout the quarter with the many lessons and the many insightful messages that we've shared upon. And on that note, I would like to ex uh, uh, move the words of welcome, firstly, to uh, the heavenly host, God the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, and to our angels uh, who are amongst us this morning, uh, today. And of course, to our viewers at home, I'd like to extend the Master's welcome to you. Thank you very much for inviting us into the comforts of your home, wherever it is that you may be tuning in from, uh, and on whichever platform, be it via uh, Facebook, YouTube, or via television broadcast. It is our prayer that uh, you are continuing in the faith and continuing to hold on to uh, the hope that we have in Jesus Christ. And I have with me here in, st uh, in studio um, two uh, of our panelists, uh, Taltala Amin Yasi Lutukitanga, and as well as uh, Etika, Etika Banuve. Thank you very much for availing yourselves to um, this morning, uh, to today's uh, discussion. Uh, but before we dive deep into the Word of God, I'll just ask Etika if you could lead us with a word of prayer. Thank you. Let us pray. 
Our Heavenly Father, who art in heaven, Lord, hallowed be thy name. We come before your presence today. Thank you, Lord, for your love and unfailing message that has been with us throughout the gate. Lord, as we are about to share your word this morning, uh, we ask for the assistance of the guidance of the Holy Spirit to lead us and to teach us today as we share your words. And also pray for the lives of our friends and families and to those that are joining us today. Uh, whatever messages that we're going to be sharing to be a means of blessings in each of our lives is our prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Hebrews chapter 13, verse 1, the word of God says, Let brotherly love continue. That is our memory text, and it is also the title of today's lesson. Now, as we come to the conclusion of the book of Hebrews, the apostles' concluding say a statement is simple. Let brotherly love continue. Now, he has affirmed throughout the entire book that we are part of, of the family of God, that we are part, we are children of the Most High, part of the family of the priest and the high king, the brothers and sisters of Jesus Christ. Now, the author does not only perceive the readers and the Hebrews, uh, and uh, you know, the readers and the uh, Hebrews of that time, and also this time, as individuals who are pursuing relationship with Christ, but more importantly, as a family, a group, a unit, a household who have been saved together and who are continuing in the faith and in the work together. Now, Paul categorized the work of Jesus, his entire ministry, with one sentence, let brotherly love continue. And uh, in the book of Hebrews chapter 13, which is the basis for our studies today, we find that Paul outlines what it is or what uh, the Bible perceives to be brotherly love. And we see that it talks about visiting the forgotten. It talks about honoring marriage, avoiding sexual immorality, avoiding covetousness. And we also talked about remembering our leaders and obeying our leaders. And of course, praying for our leaders and for the author himself. And that will be the uh, basis of our study today. And I know that we are uh, more than excited to study the Word of God, because I feel that, uh, you know, the more we dive into the book of Hebrews, the more sweet it has become. Ethica, uh, um, uh, I know that uh, Hebrews chapter 1, as I've just uh, read out, let brotherly love continue. Eh? Uh, brotherly love. Now, who is included in this conscience admonition to let brotherly love continue? Thank you, Maria. And uh, yes, to our friends who are joining us this morning, uh, to your Bibles. Again, I'd like to read our memory text this morning in Hebrews chapter 13, verse 1. It reads, keep on loving each other as brothers and sisters. Yes, keep on loving each other as That's brothers and sisters. Amazing. And I believe uh, we are included in this concise admonition to let brotherly love continue, mm -hmm. for us to continue loving each other. There's uh, three other texts that I'd like to share with us on our first uh, question today in the book of John chapter 13. 14 verse, uh, sorry, John chapter 13, verse uh, 35. And it reads, Your love for one another will prove to the world that you are my disciples. Mm -hmm. In um, in First Peter chapter, chapter 4, verse 9, it reads, Cheerfully share your home with those who are in need, a meal or a place to stay. Mm -hmm. And uh, again, First John mm -hmm. chapter, chapter 4, Verse 7, it reads, Dear friends, let us continue to love one another, for love comes from God. Anyone who loves is a child of God and knows God. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, we are included in this concise admonition to let brotherly love continue. Mm -hmm. Because I believe if we continue to share this love with people and uh, to those that uh, are in need of this love, everything will automatically fall into place. Mm -hmm. And I'd like to take us back to First John chapter 4, verse 9. Eh? Mm -hmm. It reads that uh, God, my apologies, First John chapter, chapter 4, mm -hmm. verses 7 to 11. Mm -hmm. It reads, Dear friends, let us continue to love one another, for love comes from God. Anyone who loves is a child of God and knows God. Verse 8, But anyone who does not love does not know God, for God is love. Mm -hmm. Verse 9, God showed how much he loved us by sending his one and only son into the world so that we might have eternal life through him. This is real love. Not that we loved God, but that he loved us and sent his son as a sacrifice to take away our sins. Verse 11, dear friends, since God loved us that much, we surely ought to love each other. Amen. You know, it, uh, it kind of, it's a straightforward message mm. that if we love, we know God. But if we do not love, we do not know God. So at this stage, 
like we can just uh, reflect in each of our lives mm-hmm. and ask ourselves, am I loving people? Am I sharing the love that God has loved us? Am I continuing brotherly love? Because mm-hmm. if we are not, I'm sorry to tell you, we, we, do, we might be going to church, but the verse tells us that if we do not love, we do not know God. Mm-hmm. And back to our questions, to the concise admonition, to, for us to continue this brotherly love, because I believe there's a lot more people mm-hmm. in each of our residents, our neighborhood, that is in need of this brotherly love that we that we need to share to them. Mm. Yes, thank you so much for that wonderful thought, Etika. Yes, indeed. Mm. Uh, you know, everyone is included in this mm. brotherly love. The, the word of God does not say only the pastors or only mm. uh, believers or only it, it does not distinguish us, mm. but rather it says that we must continue in brotherly love, each and every single person. Now, Etika, uh, as we continue on in the book of Hebrews, it talks mm. about uh, how important it is to remember strangers. Mm. Um, now, why is it important to remember strangers and include them in our loving service? Thank you, Maria. To your Bibles again, Hebrews mm. chapter 13, verse 2. Don't forget to show hospitality to strangers for some who have done this and have entertained angels without realizing it. Mm. And uh, in the book of Genesis, chapter 18, mm-hmm. just take us through to the book of Genesis, chapter 18, verses uh, 1 to 2, mm. 1 and 2. The Lord appeared again to Abraham near the oak grove belonging to Mamre. One day Abraham was sitting at the entrance to his tent during the hottest part of the day. He looked up and noticed three men standing nearby. When he saw them, he ran to meet them and welcomed them, bowing low to the ground. He didn't know them, Mm. but he knew that it was them, the three angels God sent them Mm. to him. Like uh, no one told him that the three angels were coming, Mm. but... He felt the when the three men approached him, like he knew that they were gods and angels. And uh, to our question, why is it important to remember that strangers are included in our circle of uh, loving care? Like what I've read uh, uh, in the book of uh, Hebrews chapter 13 verse 2, that we have to love strangers as well. Because mm. some of them have uh, uh, experienced uh, things with uh, angels, mm. that, like what uh, Abraham has experienced. Mm. And... Um, Last week, we just celebrated Global Youth Day. That is when we share these uh, or remember strangers that we we have to be included, them to be included as well in our circle of loving care. Um, I'd like to share to our friends and families and especially to you youths who are tuning in this morning, uh, today. You know, some of us, we we have our love that is programmed. We have a a programmed kind of love. Yes, indeed. Most of the churches... Then only they reach out during Global Youth Day. Mm. We've uh, gone through our Youth Week of Prayer, and I believe some of you have been uh, doing reach outs throughout the week. And again, we're going to be concluding our Youth Week of Prayer today or maybe tomorrow. Mm. And uh, many of us have this e- major event, like we just wait for 20th of March or 19th March to show or just include these strangers into our circle of loving care. Mm. But that shouldn't be the case. Back to Hebrews chapter 13, verse 1. Let brotherly love Love continue. continue. Like it should be a a series, part Mm -hmm. of sequence in each of our lives to continue this love. Mm -hmm. Uh, Let us not only have this as a major event or a day event, not to actually show our loves for Mm -hmm. strangers, for strangers, but for us to continue this brotherly love, especially to those that are, to those that uh, you've reached out uh, during Global Youth Day. And I find it important for us to share this love. Because God first loves us. Amen. And if God has loved us, mm. I mean, who are we to keep this love with ourselves? Yes, indeed, indeed. Let us share it to those that are in need of the same love as well that we are all loved in. Loved in. Amen. Thank you for that, Etika. And to our viewers at home, uh, I agree with Etika. And I thank Etika for sharing with us. You know, Abraham was sitting on just a random mm. day. It wasn't mm. Global Youth Day. Mm. It was just True. a random day. And he saw strangers. He did not know them. But he mm. felt the need to accommodate them. Mm. And he felt the need to reach out to them. And I understand that sometimes we often overlook strangers. But it is our prayer that you will continue to reach out to strangers. Mm. Uh, tala tala, um, <coughs> now, why does, uh, in Hebrews chapter 13, verse uh, 3, why does the author make a special appeal to the, to, for us to remember those in prison? Thank you, uh, Maria. Mm. Thank you as well, uh, Etika, for okay. the challenge that you have shared. Uh, in relation to the question that was asked. Now, about that question, it's important as well, not only to accommodate and remember and love Mm -hmm. strangers, but we need to 
what's out and um, care for prisoners as well. Mm -hmm. uh, in Hebrews chapter 13 verses, verse 3, it reads, I'm reading from the New King James Version. Remember the prisoners as if chained with them, mm. those who are mistreated, since you yourselves are in the body also. Now there is a word that is given in this verse that actually makes clear what Paul meant, mm. uh, what he was um, really uh, relating us to. Now, when you look at verse 3, the very last part of that verse, it says, since you yourself are in the body also. Now, when he says that, that you, are, you yourself are in the body, he is referring to the body of believers. And um, in the context of what he is writing here, he says, remember those who are in prison as well, who has been mistreated because of the faith they profess. Mm. And this same faith, you who are free are actually pro professing as well. Mm. But uh, it's, it's unfortunate, unfortunate that some of the believers ended up in prison and being mistreated because of that. Mm. And so he encourages those that he was writing to, to remember them in their prayers. And even to the extent that they would provide for them. Okay? Now, let me read a couple of verses to us in Hebrews chapter 10, verses 32 to verse 34. Here is what the writer says. For we know him who said, vengeance is mine. Mm. I will repay, says the Lord. And again, the Lord will judge his people. It is a fearful thing to fall into the hands of the living God. Okay, verse, verse 32. But recall the former days in which after you were illuminated, you endured a great struggle with sufferings, partly while you were made a spectacle, both by reproaches and tribulations, and partly while you became companions of those who were so treated. In verse 34, for you had compassion on me in my chains and joyfully accepted the plundering of your goods, knowing that you have a better and an enduring possession for yourselves in heaven. So note what it says here, especially in verse 32, that in the former days, oh, we were enjoying life to the full. But then he says, when you become illuminated, you begin, you were being mistreated. Mm -hmm. Meaning that when you come to accept Christ, you begin to face challenges. Mm. And this verse reminds us that we need to remember those who are in prison because of that, okay? Because of their faith in Christ. Mm. And uh, 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 the last verse that I wish to read is in Matthew chapter 25, verse 36. Matthew chapter 25, verse 36. And um, here is how it reads in the New King James Version. Uh, Matthew 25, 36, it reads, I was naked and you clothed me. I was sick and you visited me. I was in prison and you came to me. Now you know what is said here, what Jesus is hearing here. He is saying that when you do that to another person who is a believer of him, you are actually doing it to Jesus himself. Mm -hmm. Okay? And I believe uh, that, Maria, that it's, it's important that we need to um, watch and care for those who are in prison because of their faith for Jesus Christ. Amen. Thank you for that, Tala. I know that many times we, we tend to forget them. Eh? Yes. And uh, in, you know, in, uh, in conjunction or rather in collaboration with our theme for, global youth for this week, global, uh, for Global Youth Day as well as Youth Week of Prayer, Loving the Forgotten. Let mm. us continue to mm. love the forgotten. Uh, Tala, uh, I believe in uh, the book of John, mm. uh, the Apostle John provides uh, some important counsel. What, does, mm. uh, you know, what important point does the book of John make? Yes, uh, let me read that verse to us in 1 John. Chapter 3, verse 18. My little children, let us not love in word or in tongue, mm. but in deed and in truth. 
how it's very easy to say something, to say that you're going to do something. Speaking or saying things is very easy, but let me say it's very different from you doing, actually doing what you are saying. Mm -hmm. And so this is a challenge to us, yes, challenge indeed. to Christians and challenge to every one of us, um, regardless of the height of faith that you are living in. Mm -hmm. Let me say that the Bible is practical in a sense when we say something, it has to go together with what we need to do. And so when Paul here encouraging us to show brotherly love, it's not just in words, in action as well. Mm -hmm. So when he says we love strangers, we don't just say, oh, may you have a blessed day or may you have a fruitful day. And then we see them suffering in hunger mm -hmm. uh, or living in a not very conducive environment. And we know very well that we can supply for them. Mm -hmm. And so when we say that they have to be in good life, we need to supply for them as well, even for prisoners and even for those who are sick in um, hospital as well, who are in the prison of who are being bounded by the disease or illness that they are suffering from. And so we need to be in action rather than just in words. Rather than just in mm. words. You know, Tala, there's a saying that we always say, action speaks louder, louder than, than words. words. Yes. Yes. Let us continue to, uh, you know, love in actions rather than loving in words. Mm. You know, uh, as Tala was sharing, I'm just reminded, sometimes we, we like to meet, when we meet people, we often say, I'll be praying for you. Yeah. But yes. when we actually bow our heads and pray, mm. do we remember them? Mm. Uh, that, that's uh, something that we should, uh, you know, I, I'm saying this because I know I'm someone who's guilty of this. And uh, it occurred to me as I was reading the lesson and I was just challenged that, you know, maybe we need to not only say that we'll be praying for them, yes. but we should actually pray, pray. for them. Yes. And uh, it is my prayer that we will, uh, you know, let brotherly love continue and that we'll care for others, especially the uh, forgotten and those around us, and that we will continue to pray for one another. Mm -hmm. uh, the book of Hebrews then goes on to talk about uh, sexual immorality, specifically mm -hmm. avoiding sexual mm -hmm. immorality. Uh, Etika, how relevant is this counsel for Christians of today? Thank you, Maria. Uh, to your Bibles, Hebrews chapter 13, verse 4. I'm reading from the New Living Translation. It reads, give honor to marriage and remain faithful to one another in marriage. Mm -hmm. God will surely judge people who are immoral and those who commit adultery. Mm -hmm. My apologies to all marriage couples who are tuning in this morning. I'm still not married, but I'm, I'll try my best to give advice and to answer your question mm -hmm. about uh, this. Uh, how relevant is it counsel for Christians today? Mm -hmm. Some yes. marriages don't even last for a year, mm -hmm. even for months, I believe so. Mm -hmm. uh, I remember a story back at uh, home back in the village, uh, they just uh, got married Don't after tell us marriage. where you come from. <laughs> <laughs> just Amen. after marriage, yes. after they got married, after they got married, and then uh, I think just a week after marriage, mm. uh, the, uh, the lady was actually crying mm. and uh, she wanted to go back home, mm. go back to her parents. Mm. Now regarding that issue about uh, the, the verse that yes. I've read for us, mm. Give your honor to marriage and remain mm. faithful to one another. Mm. I believe uh, she cried so hard, so much because uh, just after marriage, she learned something about what her husband has done. Oh, I see. That was the cause of her wanting to leave mm. her husband. And then they ended up divorcing mm. and um, they left each other. And I believe they now both uh, have uh, separate families. They again have moved on with uh, different other families. And uh, again, I'd like to read to us this verse. Give your honor to marriage and remain faithful to one another in marriage. Mm. To, to our friends who's actually, uh, who find this habit, this adultery uh, and uh, immoral immorality, mm. uh, find it uh, challenging, uh, challenging or you know, they find it as a good behavior or a good mm. deed, God will surely judge you. Mm. And if you're continuing with this, it's a plea from uh, me to put an end to it because uh, we might find it uh, you know when we commit sin it's going to be like a you know a lollipop yeah it's it gets sweeter that before sweeter. and then it finishes mm -hmm. sin is like that when we when we try something or when we find a sin it grows bigger and then we we won't expect what's going to be happening to us later and uh, yes uh, i find it i find this practical relevant uh practical counsel for Christians today. 
because mm. they have to be reminded that uh, marriage mm. is uh, is a uh, is a new bond mm. a new relationship because they have trusted each other mm. to set aside their differences and for them to come together and start a new family and uh, for them to avoid sexual immorality and regarding to the text that I've shared with us mm. because some of this Paul wants the readers against sexual immorality mm-hmm. and greed because they are two grave threats to brotherly love. Mm-hmm. You know when uh, you have a family and then uh, someone comes out and tries to have an affair with uh, the lady mm-hmm. in the family, they will definitely have a, a not good a good relationship, relationship with each other. Yes, that will somehow put an end to brotherly love. Mm-hmm. You will somehow disturb the love and the connections mm-hmm. they have and you'll also put in much pressure to the family. Mm-hmm. And uh, that is when... Uh, that is why Paul warns the readers against sexual immorality that this is one of the grave threats to brotherly love. Because mm-hmm. once we face this, definitely, as we are humans, mm-hmm. you know, we'll, we'll definitely find issues and find ways to solve this issue and uh, it will put an end to our brotherly love. Mm-hmm. So for us to put an end to it, and we mm-hmm. know that if we continue with this, God will surely judge us. If you're continuing with sexual immorality mm-hmm. and if you're continuing with adultery, I'd like to re- to remind you and to warn you that God will surely judge you. And for us to put an end to it, because this will definitely distract and somehow stop and put an end to us mm-hmm. having brotherly love, love with, with people. people. Mm-hmm. Yes, indeed, Etika. Thank you for sharing okay. that. And I know Etika says that it's a message from him, but I'd like to think that it's a message from God and from the Bible Amen. itself. <laughs> and uh, as Etika was sharing on marriage, you know, marriage is a holy institution. Mm-hmm. Eh? Mm-hmm. God performed the first marriage. It was his intention that marriages should flourish. Mm-hmm. And that is why the book of Hebrews reminds us that we must, you know, uh, continue in, uh, you know, let us be mindful mm-hmm. of our uh, of marriages. And uh, Etika, thank you for sharing uh, on to marriage couple. Now let's talk about, uh, a young, you know, for us, young people and mm. not only young people I mean the people of all ages uh, you know some one of the biggest epidemic that we have these days is pornography mm. with uh, the internet and everything now what counsel does the Bible provide in terms of uh, pornography and how one should behave towards it thank you Maria I believe that uh, pornography now this is nothing uh, new. It's, it's nothing new yes indeed yes and uh, you know most of our friends and we we know that um, in this website there's a lot of uh, uh, Nothing such important mm-hmm. to us people today. But let's forget about uh, these, the websites that they do go for, mm-hmm. for pornography. Even we have it on Facebook, mm-hmm. YouTube. Some mm-hmm. of the, the ads that shows yeah, up, true, it, it shows pornography. Mm-hmm. And uh, uh, in the book of uh, 1 Corinthians, chapter, chapter 6, verse 18 to 20, mm-hmm. and it reads, Run from sexual sin. No other sin so clearly affects the body as this one does. From sexual immorality is a sin against your own body. Mm. Verse 19, don't you realize that your body is a temple of the Holy Spirit who lives in you and was given to you by God? Mm. You do not belong to yourself. And verse 20, for God bought you with a high price, so you must honor God with your body. Mm. Whatever you do with yourself, Mm. verse 20, for God bought you with a high price, so you must honor God with your your body. body. And I believe that answers our question yes, into uh, mm. uh, today regarding the epidemic of pro- mm. pornography on the internet. Mm. I'd like to remind us young people and to those of you who are joining us today, uh, what all that you do, either scrolling through Facebook or YouTube or even talking to your friends mm. um, through Messenger, WhatsApp, Viber, what all. Mm. Do that all or whatever you do with your body because you were bought with a high price and let us not take, uh, uh, take it lightly. True. Mm. Yes, let's not take it lightly and that we must honor God with our body. You know how the world sells pornography in its in every aspect Mm. is uncontrollable Mm. to us today. How the world throws it at us, even in the phone that we have in Mm. our hands and the TV that we watch as a family. It has a piece of, you know, pornography. comes uh, in every, uh, almost every um, what uh, market ads we mm, have. True, true. Okay? It, it's, it's not just um, it directly, but indirectly mm-hmm. relates to it. And, and, and for me, um, it, it, it's important that we, that we look at things that we use as the word of God to strain, mm. sort of, 
uh, everything that we see. And so it's a, it, it's a challenge for us, mm. for young people and for everybody. Mm. Um, this is why the psalmist says that, that thy word have I hid in mm. my heart. Because in everything we see, it's the word of God that would um, sort of strain out, okay? Mm. What would trigger negative thought mm. Mm. to arouse the much more lustful desire mm. for us to venture into that uh, very devilish uh, ground mm. that is uh, pornography. And I just want to say that Thank it's very important for us to Amen. consume Amen. God's mm. word. Uh, Amen. Mm. Thank you for that, Tata. Mm. And I understand that, you know, sometimes we like to, oh, heads and pray, Lord, please, I want to overcome this habit. Mm -hmm. uh, but we don't, uh, we tend to yes. forget to read the mm. word of God. And uh, Tala has shared that, yes, indeed, mm -hmm. thy word have I hidden in my heart. And it, would, it should be a challenge for mm -hmm. everyone, uh, regardless of age, regardless of whether or not you're mm -hmm. dealing or struggling with a habitual sin. We must continue mm -hmm. to read the word of God. Uh, yes, you, you know, the, the devil is very smart, eh? Indeed. Mm -hmm. But we have to be smarter than the devil. Yes. Amen. Yes. Yeah. So let's, uh, I believe anything is possible, Tala, mm -hmm. if, we, if we pray about it mm -hmm. and ask mm -hmm. for the Holy Spirit mm -hmm. to lead mm -hmm. and to guide us through uh, the issues that we're discussing. Mm -hmm. Today. Yeah. And, and the way to be smarter than a very good way to put it the way to be smarter than the devil is God's really? word. And mm -hmm. even Jesus, when he was tempted, he understands the limitation of human nature. But then the way to escape is quote mm. God's word. Uh, Tala, I know, uh, you know, we, we talk about it theoretically, but I understand yes. that many people out there, uh, you know, although some many would not like to admit they still struggle, they struggle with this uh, yes. sin. And uh, what word of encouragement would you offer to someone who is, you know, struggling with this? Um, you know, the question that we, we might want to ask is, how do you value yourself? Mm. Now, when I read this verse, it's, an, it's encouraging to me. The verse that uh, Etika read, that is in First Corinthians chapter 6, especially verse 19, it reads, Or do you not know that your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit? Okay, who is in you, whom you have from God, and you are not your own. Yeah. Now, consider this, this question that I've just asked. How do you value yourself? If you look at yourself, value or worth less than money, and you look at money mm. more valuable than you, then of course, it will be very easy for you to sell your body to get something more valuable. Mm. And if you look at yourself, your friends is much more valuable, more worth than you, then of course you would easily give in to temptation because you, in how you see it, that your friendship is much more important. But if you see yourself that God is more valuable, your friendship, your relationship with God is much more valuable, then you would honor this, then you would take this as a wonderful mm -hmm. promise, as, some, as a privilege that you are not your own. You are actually going around, but you know, God is with you. God is housed in you, rather. God yes, is indeed. housed in you. What because an the verse says, do you not know that you are the temple of God? Mm. What an honor to go around housing God. Mm. Yes, indeed. Okay? And, 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 and that for me, it gives a sense of... Um, Honor, mm. value, and if there's anything that we would be tempted to, it will be hard because mm. we know, no, I will not give in to money, I will not give in to friends, mm. I will not give in to temptation. Why? Because I have God. Mm. Amen. I have God. What a wonderful thought. Thank you for that talent to our viewers at home. Yes, mm. indeed. If uh, you are struggling with something, please know. And if no one has ever told you it, please know mm. that you are the house of God. Mm. We live in a world where sex sells. Mm. We see it, we look around, we see it everywhere. Mm. But I want to let you know that the creator mm. of the world promises to be with you. Yes. So Everything else is just created. Mm. The creator controls everything. If you are struggling with a habitual sin uh, mm. uh, such as sexual immorality, mm. he will be there to guide you, to lead you, and to show you the way. We've talked a bit on um, sexual immorality. Thank you for that. Uh, Tala Tala, you know, the book of Hebrews also talks on covetousness. Eh? Mm. And, you know, sometimes we don't think of this as a big sin. Eh? Mm. You know, and we mm. live in a world where we're told to want more, yeah. you know, and it's mm. nothing wrong. It's just normal. Mm. But uh, why is, um, why do you think that it, covetousness can be detrimental or can be problematic to our mm. spiritual life? 
Now let let me just read that verse, uh, Maria, to Hebrews? in 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 Hebrews chapter thirteen, verse five. Here is what um, the Bible says. I'm reading again from the New King James Version. Let your conduct be without covetousness. Mm. And then he said, be content with such thing as you have. For he himself has said, I will never have your, uh, I, will not, I will never leave you nor forsake you. Now, if you look at the Ten Commandments, mm. Maria and Etika, the two book ends of the Ten Commandments is, there shall be no other God before you and thou shalt not covet. Shall not covet. And look at it carefully. In every sin you committed, mm. covetousness is the door. Mm. You first covet before you steal. True. Mm. You first covet before you dishonor mom and dad. Mm. You first covet Even before adultery. you commit adultery. You first covet before you kill someone. Mm. And let me say, you first covet before you dishonor God. Mm. True. And covetousness is the sin that Satan committed before he set himself to be like mm. the Most High. Mm. And so it's, it's, very, it's a very dangerous thing. Very dangerous. And one thing we need to understand is that as well, that the motive of covetousness is self. Mm. True. And so whenever we open the door to covetousness, let me say this, family, friends, you are destroying self. It's just that you are lifting yourself up to be like God. Mm. And it's interesting how Jesus, um, uh, what, you, what you say, uh, counsel on this mm. in Luke chapter 12. Okay, there's a, there's a verse in, the, in, the, in the, um, this book, Luke chapter 12, verse 15. And um, here is what Jesus says. Okay, he was, here is what Jesus said. Luke chapter 12, verse 15. I'm reading again from the New King James Version. And he said to them, Take heed and beware of covetousness. Mm. Listen to this. Take heed and beware of covetousness, for one's life does not consist in the abundance of the things he possesses. And then, see, listen to this. Straight after this, from verse 16 to verse 21, he said about the rich fool. Mm. The parable of the rich fool. And then, my friend, how serious covetousness is. And so, um, Maria, mm. you know, covetousness is, is just worse mm. because the focus and the motive of covetousness itself, and it is very, very destructive. Mm. And <laughs> I, I believe so. This is why Jesus says is take heed mm. and beware of, of covetousness, covetousness because there is someone who was thrown down from heaven to earth <laughs> simply because simply. of covetousness. Of covetousness. Mm. Thank you for so much for that, Tala, and I believe the, the viewers will have been challenged mm. by what you're share, sharing. And uh, it's very insightful as well um, how covetousness uh, provides a way or mm. is a leeway towards other sins in the Bible. Uh, and of course, I think I believe the Bible um, shares a lot of examples of people who, mm. you know, having coveted, destroyed their lives. Uh, would you just share an example with us? Like what uh, Taltale shared mm. about Lucifer. Mm -hmm. And uh, yes, I'd like to share about Judas. You know, Hebrews chapter 13, verse 5. Mm. Don't love money. Be satisfied with what you have. Mm. For God has said, I will never fail you. Mm. I will never abandon you. Mm. And one with, uh, what we know about this man is he sold Jesus mm. just with 30 pieces of silver. Mm. Mm. I mean, like uh, most of us about covetousness, eh? mm. if we are to see or if we to look around to see where is most of this attitude present, it's not outside. Mm. It's in the church. There's a lot more in the church about covetousness. Mm. And uh, you know, uh, one thing we... We hate about it. I hate about. Mm. I mean, we we always we come to church for what reason? To be a better person. Mm. But this is something that destroys us, mm. covetousness. Mm. And when we come to church, you know, we, we don't even have try to have a teachable spirit to mm. have the Holy Spirit mm. to to ask for the Holy Spirit to lead us and to be with us. But I believe uh, in most of the churches we go to church not for the sermon. Mm -hmm. Not for closing Sabbath or for EY. We look forward to business meeting in the afternoon mm -hmm. to share and to prove us about covetousness. Mm -hmm. And for the life of Judas, 
I mean, he had everything. He, Jesus was with him. Mm. And, you know, even for us these days, we, mm. we are, you know, we're in a state of just, I, I would have, we wish to be with Jesus then. He was with Jesus. Mm. He saw the miraculous works that Jesus mm. did. Mm. And uh, when he was going around with all of the rest of the disciples, um, I mean, many of the, them that were there with Jesus then wished to be with Jesus. Mm. The followers, mm -hmm. some uh, might have been even wished to be to be his disciple, mm -hmm. and this one here, who mm -hmm. had everything mm -hmm. available with him, and who had even had the chance to talk mm -hmm. and to share with Jesus, sell, sold him just for mm -hmm. thirty pieces of silver. Mm -hmm. Many, you know, we even have friends these days. Mm -hmm. um, when we have issues with each other, mm -hmm. we've got uh, some even turn away from mm -hmm. us just because of money, mm -hmm. like what Judas mm -hmm. did to Jesus. Mm -hmm just for 30 pieces of silver. Mm. And, uh, you know, um, this lifestyle will definitely destroy us. Yes, yes will definitely destroy us. And it is for us to think about it. Mm. And, uh, you know, pray about it. I, it's very easy for us to talk about it. Mm. And mm. it's very easy for us to say to pray about it. Mm. But working it out is going to be very hard yes, for hard. us. Eh? It will <laughs> take faith. It, it, will, it will. But, you know, we, we need to seek and pray for the assistance and the power of the Holy Spirit, Spirit yes, to be indeed. with us, to put this lifestyle to an end. Yes, uh, yes just about the life of Judas. Mm. I, some, you know, he, he might have regret about selling. Mm. He did regret yes. about selling. Mm. Jesus was just 30 mm. pieces of silver. And for us too, in these last days, when we have this lifestyle with us, it will definitely break the bond of continuing brotherly love. Mm -hmm. If we have covetousness with mm -hmm. us, it's going to be very hard for us mm -hmm. to continue brotherly love. Mm -hmm. We even, we continue with brotherly love. We share love with each, with each mm -hmm. other. We still have covetousness. And this, it, it, it definitely does destroy mm -hmm. our relationship with people mm -hmm. and our brotherly love with each other. Yes. Thank you mm -hmm. for that, And I, I think it's because we, we often indirectly grade the types of mm -hmm. sin. And we think that covetousness True. is not that big of a sin. Mm. But, uh, you know, it uh, nonetheless, mm. you know, uh, the Bible tells us if you are wrong in one, you are wrong in all ten. Mm. And uh, so we need to be mindful of our thoughts. Mm. Uh, our thoughts can be very, very powerful and they can control our actions. So, uh, you know, we're running short of uh, time. Mm. is catching up on us. Mm. But uh, I think uh, in one uh, sentence, how would you, you know, how can we learn to be content with what we have? Again, I'd like to read again. 13. Uh, Hebrews chapter 13, verse 5. Don't love money. Be satisfied with what you have. For God has said, I will never fail you and I will never abandon you. Mm -hmm. We take this verse very lightly. Mm -hmm. And we can't, uh, uh, this Indian phrase, confider. Like mm -hmm. what, what's the use? Mm -hmm. True. Yeah? Um, so for us to learn about, to be content with what we have. If we aren't grateful, mm -hmm. we are a great fool. fool. If we <laughs> don't appreciate and if we don't learn to be content with what you have again i'd like to reiterate don't love money mm -hmm. be satisfied with what you have for god has said i will never fail you mm -hmm. and i will never abandon you mm -hmm. so for us to learn to be content mm -hmm. with what we have is if we know jesus mm -hmm. and if we know our friends well if we know about continuing mm -hmm. this brotherly love it's going mm -hmm. to be we're going to be knowing mm -hmm. how hard it feels to be content with yes, what indeed. we have Thank you for that, Atika. Thank you for that tip on Amen. how to overcome covetousness. And as you were talking, I was just thinking, you know, why do we want more money when we know the most wealthiest being in the universe? The creator True. of heaven and earth. Yes. Yeah, and we depend on his providence. Uh, covetousness, eh? Um, the Bible also talks, the book of Hebrews also talks to us about remembering our leaders. And uh, sometimes we often think of our leaders as immune to the forces of the devil. We tend to think that they are perfect. Mm. But, uh, you know, the, the writer of the book of Hebrews reminds us that just like us, mm. uh, they too uh, can be challenged uh, by the vices of the devil. Mm. And um, uh, Totala, you know, Hebrews chapter 13, verse 7. In what way should we remember those who have spoken the word of God to us? Thank you. Let me read that verse uh, to us, uh, Maria. Hebrews 13, verse 7. And uh, I'm reading from the New King James Version. Remember those who rule over you, who have spoken the word of God to you, whose faith follow, considering the outcome of their conduct. Now, I'm going to read, I'm going to refer to two other verses that would enlighten us on ways that we can follow to show how we remember uh, those of our leaders mm. okay 
First Corinthians chapter eleven verse one. Okay, I'm going to read that that uh, first verse. First Corinthians chapter eleven verse one, and here is how it reads: Imitate me, Paul said. Imitate me, just as I also imitate Christ. Amen. Now, in the context of then, Paul was their leader, and he mm. was encouraging them to in, imitate them. But who was Paul's leader? Christ. And mm. Paul imitated Christ. Okay, and so. That is one way that we can remember our leaders. Mm. We imitate them. Now, we need to be very careful of this. <laughs> In the context of what is we are sharing here, our godly, fear, God-fearing leaders, mm. okay? mm. God-fearing leaders, we imitate them. And I, I believe that through the leading of the Holy Spirit, He will remind us of what are some of the godly ways that our leaders has followed that we need to imitate? Not the bad conduct of some of um, those that have led in the past. Okay? Mm. Now, there's another verse that I wish to read to us. It's in Ephesians. Ephesians 6, 18 to 20. Praying always with all prayer and supplication in the Spirit, being watchful to this end and with all perseverance and supplication for all the saints and for me that utterance may be given to me that I may open my mouth boldly mm. to make known the mystery of the gospel for which I am an ambassador in chains that in it I may speak boldly as I ought to speak. Now, if you think carefully of what Paul is sharing here, we need to persevere in prayer. We need to persevere in praying for them. What is it that Paul is pleading that they should pray for him? Pray that they that they have an eloquence of speech mm -hmm. so that they can share in power with confidence God's word. So two practical ways. Imitate them and pray for them. Mm. Pray for them. Don't kakase them or uh, what you <laughs> gossip about them. <laughs> Don't gossip about them or talk about them or maybe mm. just mm. rather than looking at the positive things that they have mm. done, you just dwell on the negatives and all that. Mm. Please, let's just pray for them. Because mm. it's not you, it's God That's who's God. the one that has called them to that leading leadership position. Yeah, thank you, Maureen. Uh, thank you for that, Tala. Yes, imitate them. And we also, as Tala has mentioned, we must be mindful which mm. leaders we are imitating. Mm. Ultimately, the Bible should be our source. And we should always turn back to the Bible to see if what, uh, you know, if what we see around us is right or wrong and whether or not, and how do we progress. And as well as pray for them. Eh? Mm. And we tend to forget that, to tend to forget to pray for our leaders mm. because we think of them as perfect beings. But no, they are just human beings like oh, you yes. and me. And we need to pray for one another. That is brotherly love. Uh, I thank you for that. Uh, tal, 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 um, uh, you've, we've talked on uh, people, you know, uh, how we can remember our leaders. What about our leaders? How can we encourage those who lead uh, around us? Yes. Uh, let me read Hebrews chapter 13, verse 17. Okay. Uh, in the New King James Version, it says, Obey those who rule over you and be submissive, for they watch out for your souls as those who must give account. Okay, so those leaders that, that, that are watching over us in terms of our spiritual, spiritual life, mm. they are accountable for that. Okay, that's what it says here. And let me continue. Let them do so with joy. So as they watch over us, we need to help them to have joy in watching over us, in, in sharing, in nurturing us in terms of our spiritual life. For that would be profitable to us okay mm. so what are some of the en encouragement that we can show to our leaders one let us be submissive be submissive as it says in that in that verse another one let us be exhortful be encouraging to them show encouragement to them and so see one thing we need to understand is that when someone shares with joy mm. put yourself in their position mm. when they share with joy they will have the heart to teach, you know, with full vigor, and they will share everything that they have. But when they are sharing with, uh, you know, um, grief, and they are very dis discouraged in, in how they are serving us, 
they will mm. not give the full potential mm. of the ability that they have been blessed with to share and to 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 nurture and to guide us as in the position of leadership. Mm. And so those are uh, some of the, the ways that we can show encouragement. Be submissive, be exhortful, and let's help them to share with joy to us. Mm. Yeah. Amen. Thank you for that, uh, Tautala. Now, I think I uh, understand that sometimes, uh, you know, we tend to find that some leaders tend to wander from the truth of God. Mm. And Tautala has mentioned that uh, don't kakasi. Yes, we mm. do that a lot. We come and we talk about them after Sabbath or uh, over lunch. Mm. Uh, the question is, Etika, how can we, what's the appropriate course of action for someone who is wandering from the truth? To your Bibles, in First John chapter 5, verses mm. 16 and 17, if you see a Christian brother or sister sinning in a way that does not lead to death, you should pray and God will give you mm. or give that person life. But there is a sin that leads to death and I am not saying you should pray for those who commit it. Mm. I'll read it again. Uh, verses uh, 16 and 17. Mm. Verse 17, all wicked actions are sin, but not every sin leads to mm. death. Just the first part of uh, the... Verse 16, 16 yeah. Yeah? if you mm. see a Christian brother or sister sinning in a way that does not lead to death, you should pray mm. and God will give that person life. Mm. Mm. You should pray. Mm. Mm. So if we see, you know, it's, it's common in the church when we see someone sinning and then just after, we, we tend to have a small groups, small kind of church board and other business meetings to go and talk about it. And you know, um, like what Tal Tal has shared say about it and talk about it. But yes, uh, mm -hmm. we should just pray for them. Pray mm -hmm. for them. Pray mm -hmm. about it. And he says in First John chapter 5 that he will give that person life. Yeah. So mm -hmm. when we see these issues mm -hmm. happening in the church or when we see this happening with our leaders, what should we do? Should pray for just them. pray about them mm. instead of spreading uh, rumors or stories about them. But just mm. pray for them. And when we pray for them, God grants us that he will definitely give that person life. Mm. And yes, uh, you know, being a leader, uh, I've led the uh, Adventist Students Association at Nasino campus mm. for two years. And Taltala, he is a chaplain. You've mm. also led uh, uh, groups of students. You know, they won't know how hard it feels to be a leader until they become a leader. Mm. Mm. It's very easy for people to talk and criticize about our leadership. But when they sit in our positions as leaders of each societies and holding roles in, they'll, then they'll know how hard it feels to be running part of this department mm. and uh, how it feels to be mm. a leader. To be under pressure. To be under from pressure. From your experience. True. Mm. Not, not from my experience, oh. <laughs> <laughs> but from yes. Um, when we talk about this, mm. like it, it, uh, Definitely for us to reflect on our lives and seeing ourselves mm. like I have uh, for, for last year and for the first year during mm. my first year in university when we had uh, issues uh, about uh, our leadership uh, roles, mm. um, they talked about it. Mm. They went, we had a combined mass mass and they talked about one of our vice president. Mm. And then when it came to us back uh, during uh, our small, the executive committee at Nasino, or our vice president decided to resign. I mean, we, instead of getting these issues, instead of praying about it, we tend to talk about it. Not true. But this that should be a good. lesson to us, mm. for us to pray about it. And when we just pray about it, God says that he will give that person mm. a life. Mm. And in Matthew chapter 18, correcting another believer mm. from verse 15 to verse, to verse 17, mm. It reads, if another believer sins against you, go privately and point out the offense. Mm. Mm. Go privately and talk about it or talk about the offense and pin up the offense. Mm. Mm. We usually say, share this phrase in most of the places. Hey, you, you find an issue, you don't uh, feel good about this issue, come, let's talk about it. Mm. But before he comes to you with the issue and to talk about, you, talk about the issue with you, I believe most of the church members have already known about the issue before he comes and talk about the issue with you. But this should be a lesson to us. Point out the offense. And if the person listens and confesses it, you have won that person back. Mm -hmm. Verse 16, mm -hmm. but if you're unsuccessful, take one or two others with you and go back again so that everything you say may be confirmed by two or three other witnesses. Mm 
And if person still refuses to listen, take your case to the church. Mm -hmm. Then if he or she won't accept the church decision, treat that person as a pagan or a corrupt tax collector. Oh, this is a very deep thought. Mm -hmm. True, indeed. In verse 17, and if the person still refuses to listen, take your case to church. Then if he, if he or she still won't accept the church decision, treat that person as a pagan or a corrupt tax collector. Mm -hmm. You know, Taltala, if we, uh, Maria, and if, if we go through this, I mean, uh, it's better to go and talk privately about it. Mm. And uh, if he agrees, you have won that person mm. back. And then if you're unsuccessful, take two or three to go to be your witnesses. Mm. And if he still refuses to listen, then you take the case to church. Mm. And if he, she, he or she won't accept the church decision, treat that person as a pagan or corrupt tax collector. Mm. If we come to this verse, we'll question about our title mm. and yeah. the theme that we're going to be talking about today. Mm. Where's brotherly love? Mm. Mm. True. Where, where's going to be the brotherly love that we're going mm. to be talking about? And as, um, the best thing for us to do when we find these issues happening in the church, uh, you know, most of the time when we find these issues happening in the church, in each of our local church, we, we make it a big issue. Mm. You go and talk about it to this one and to this one, and then they spread the story. And when the story explodes in the church, they call a meeting, business meeting, maybe a church mm. board, and then we come and talk about this issue together. Well, it was, it could have been solved in the first mm. place for you to just go and privately talk about the mm. offense and just pray about it. Mm. So the, I believe the main core or the, mm. the, uh, the answer of what I'm trying to express here mm. is just pray about them. Mm. That's the thing that you have to do. Sure. Get on your knees and pray for them. Amen. And Amen. Uh, God will just give them a life. Amen. And, uh, I believe if you are not in a state mm -hmm. of getting on your knees and pray about it, where's brotherly love? Mm -hmm. yeah, Where is the love that we come to church for and, you know, talk about, we share about? What's mm -hmm. the point of coming to church mm -hmm. if you and don't have brotherly love? Yeah, I that think is clear. what Etika is trying to say, if you cannot pray about it, then don't talk about don't it. Don't talk about it. <laughs> Thank you, Etika. <laughs> Such uh, interesting mm -hmm. and powerful thoughts, uh, Etika. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much for that. Mm -hmm. And um, our time is catching up on us mm -hmm. real quick. Mm -hmm. But uh, the lesson also will just continue on with our final thought. Mm -hmm. um, identifying and resisting uh, strange doctrines. And to our viewers at home, please let us be mindful of our words. Eh? Words carry weight. Jesus mm -hmm. is the word of life. And uh, let us be mindful because when we talk about things, it comes to no avail. Eh? Mm -hmm. And uh, of course, uh, the devil likes to twist the word of God. Mm -hmm. And we see that today mm. even more, where mm. we have a lot of strange doctrines that are circulating. Mm. Yeah. And now, how can mm. we identify strange do uh, doctrines? I think uh, briefly. Mm. Thank you, Maria. In Hebrews chapter 13, verse 9. So do not be attracted by strange new ideas. Your strength comes from God's grace, not from rules about food, which don't help those who follow them. Mm. Yes. How can we identify strange doctrines Satan might seek to promote in our midst? Mm. You know, many a times we find uh, doctrines and even messages being shared at church. Mm. We might know, we might thought that hey, it's a God-given message. Mm. But little do we know that it's the devil in our midst. You know, mm. if there's a place, uh, I remember uh, the words of uh, Talatala, Peter Wanganui, Tamailus is a well-known man back in our district at Raki Raki. He only shares about this. Like, if you're thinking that the devil is in nightclubs or in the sports field or in elsewhere, you're wrong. The devil is in the church itself. Mm. Yeah, the devil is in the church. And yes, just, uh, so if we thought about, uh, you know, I believe sometimes when we go to church, we can't even identify it. It, like we've shared already that the mm. devil is smart, but we have to be smarter than the devil. Yeah. Yeah? And uh, for us these days, it's it's a bit, I believe it's very hard for us to identify strange mm. doctrines mm. that Satan might seek to promote in our midst. Yes, indeed. So, I mean, when we go through, so from the verse that I've shared in verse 9 of uh, Hebrews chapter 13, do not be attracted by strange new ideas. Your strength comes from God's grace, not from rules about food, which don't help those mm. who follow them. Mm. Why did he say rules about food, who, which don't help people, those who follow them? Now, this is even um, a strange doctrine. You go to a shop, you see this secret box. Smoking causes cancer. It's already identified in the secret box. What do you do? You still buy the secret and then you still smoke secret. That is why he, he shares that from rules about food, which people do, those who don't follow them. Mm. And uh, so for us not to be attracted by strange or new ideas, because we have to know that our strength comes from God's grace. Amen. 
Mm -hmm. And we have to be, because if we know that our strength comes from God's grace, I mean, that will definitely help us identify mm -hmm. strange doctrines that Satan might seek to promote in our midst. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, if there's people he's trying to look and for to devour, it's not people at the outside. It's us mm -hmm. in the church. Okay. And again, back to our topic, back to what we are talking about, about brotherly love. Mm -hmm. And if we are not going to be, you know, going to be vital mm -hmm. or to think about this, and if we take this lightly, definitely it's going to be uh, running our bloods and also to our next generation mm -hmm. that is to come. Because if we don't, uh, I, if we are not even in the state of identifying these strange doctrines, mm -hmm. how are we going to help our generations that is to come? Mm -hmm. How are we going to spread this message about let brotherly love continue with the mm -hmm. people who is to come? Uh, thank you, uh, Etika, for, for what you shared in each challenge. And um, I just want to encourage us that we need to go to God's word. Amen. Mm. Uh, the psalmist says in 119, Psalms 119 verse 11, your word have I hidden in my heart so that I may not sin. You know, when you are swept into strange doctrines, meaning the doctrines that are not biblical, mm. doctrines mm. that are not uplifted in the Bible, that has mm. no place in the Bible. And let me say that you are committing sin. Mm. Mm. And why is that? Because there's no word of God in our heart, in mm. our mind. Eh? And there's another thing as well that Isaiah says in Isaiah chapter 8, verse 20, to the law and to the testimony, if they do not speak against, to against, according to this word, it is mm. because there is no light in them. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. And so, again, uh, this is an encouragement from God to us. Mm. <laughs> we need to, we need to. Go, to, go, to go, go to His word. It's Amen. His word. When you have His word, Mm. you can easily identify strange mm. doctrines. Okay. Yes, thank you for that, Tala. And uh, as you were sharing, I've just, uh, I, was, I, was just, uh, I just looked into the Bible and I realized Hebrews chapter 9, I think mm. verse, right mm. before it, you have the verse 8. And this is a well-known text. It says, mm. Jesus is the same, same. yesterday, mm. today, and forever. Yeah. Jesus is the word of life. Mm. The word of life is the same yesterday, today, and forever. The Bible mm. will not contradict itself. Mm. Yeah. That is something that we need to be mindful of. Whenever we see these doctrines, we need to remember that the, Jesus never contradicts himself. Yeah. So you, we have to pray fully and pray for the inspiration of the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. The devil is good at twisting. He twisted it. That was how he initially made Adam and Eve sin. We mm -hmm. have to be mindful of that. Eh? And uh, Tala, finally, uh, for our last question for uh, today, just before we leave, I believe the lesson has this phrase, uh, outside the camp. Yeah. Now, some people, uh, you know, mock Jesus mm. because he died what what people refer to as outside the camp. Now, mm. what does it mean to yeah. follow Jesus outside, outside the camp? Outside the camp, yes. Let me just read that verse uh, in Hebrews chapter 13, verse 13. Therefore, let us go forth to him outside the camp, bearing his reproach. Mm. Now, when you look at the context of the Israelites, what happens outside the camp? Mm -hmm. Outside the camp, you will find lepers. Outside the camp, you'll mm -hmm. find outcasts. Mm -hmm. And let me say this, outside the camp in Israel is the Mount Calvary. Mm -hmm. Outside the camp is where Jesus died. Outside the camp is where they burn mm -hmm. the refuse of the offerings. Outside the camp is the outcast. And that's where Jesus was willing to go so that you can be in the camp. Amen. What a great hope. So that we can be in Amen. the camp. And so what Jesus is, what, what the writer is saying here, let us follow Jesus outside the camp in a sense. That Jesus was, he sacrificed himself for us. He died for us. He gave up everything for us. And if Jesus was willing to do that, was willing to go outside the camp for us, let us also, in the basis of brotherly love, have the confidence to follow Jesus mm. in our, the spirit of sacrifice mm. for others, to go outside, mm. outside of our comfort zone, outside mm. of what we, the, the, the culture or the tradition of what we normally do. Why, what is the motive of that? just so that we can save, so that in God can use us to save someone, to save a stranger, to go to prison, mm. to go to help those who are suffering from an illness, from diseases, to those who are 
outcast out there because they want to see Jesus. Where are they? They are outside the camp. Let's go with Jesus mm. outside the camp. Yeah. Amen. Thank you so much, Tala. And I believe that sums up our lesson for mm. this week. Yeah. Let brotherly love continue. Mm. What is brotherly love? Brotherly love is love that knows no bounds, mm. love that extends mm. to people, regardless of who they are, where they're from, inside the camp or outside the camp. Mm. The creator of heaven and earth came down to this world, reached out outside the camp for you and for me. Who are we to not share that same hope, that same love to those around us? Mm -hmm. And uh, to our viewers at home, thank you so much for joining us. Uh, I believe, I hope that you have been challenged and that you have been renewed with strength and with joy and with hope as we've shared our lesson for this quarter. Let brotherly love continue. This concludes our study uh, within the book of Hebrews. And I hope that you have been challenged and uh, reju uh, rejuvenated. Uh, Brotherly love continuing, caring for others, you know, avoiding sexual immorality, avoiding covetousness, remembering our leaders, and of course, mm -hmm. fleeing from strange doctrines. And uh, as we, before we pray, I'd like to in, uh, invite our viewers. Uh, next week, we will begin a new and insightful and uh, sweet discussion based on the book of Genesis. We will be studying the book of creation. Don't miss it. Join us once more, and uh, we hope to see you then. Uh, but until then, we hope that you will uh, stay with hope and uh, keep the faith. And uh, before we conclude, I'll just ask Tala, Tala, please do pray for us. Let's pray. Lord, we thank you so much for your presence that you have been with us all through these 13 weeks of sharing from your word. And thank you for encouraging us. Uh, in some times, in some of the, the lessons that we've studied, we have been reproved, we have been corrected. Mm -hmm. And as well, we have been equipped for the good work that you have laid before us. And Lord, we are looking forward to another study. And that is coming up, studying the book of Genesis, mm -hmm. the very book that you wrote and you have uh, sold in vision to your man Moses that he was able to write it. And Lord, we are encouraged and we are excited, looking forward to the study. And thank you for those who are, have been joining with us. And I pray, Lord, that you will be with them. Bless them and uh, grow them spiritually, Lord. Lord, may we continue in your presence with your blessing is our prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. first can be difficult. What can we learn from Peter that will help us put God first in our lives today? Peter was one of the oldest disciples Jesus called. He was determined and reliable. On a stormy night, Jesus appeared to the group as a ghost walking on water. Peter was the first to speak out in his desire to be with Jesus, even if it meant jumping out of the boat and walking on water. Putting God first seemed to come easy for Peter until he almost drowned. As Peter walked, he doubted. As he began to be engulfed by the water, he must have felt the shame of public failure. He was the one who had asked to come to Jesus, but then everybody witnessed his failure. In the midst of despair, it's not easy to put God first, but Peter did it. He shouted for help and Jesus saved him. This story repeats itself. Jesus is arrested and crucified. Peter had promised to be next to Jesus no matter what, but Jesus warned him of his betrayal. Peter wasn't afraid. He was ready to die for Jesus. This becomes clear when Peter attacks a soldier in Gethsemane. What Jesus did next was perplexing to him. Jesus healed the man and said he didn't need protection. What could that mean? Peter was ready for conflict and Jesus rebuked him. He followed Jesus from a distance and denied knowing him three times that night, just as Jesus predicted. Peter had failed once again. 
You see, putting God first amidst our failure, confusion, and shame is practically impossible. It's only through God's power that we can accept God's forgiveness and start again. Later, Peter would become an excellent leader as Jesus trusted him again and again. Perhaps you've been unfaithful with returning your tithe and giving your promise in the past. Perhaps you've failed. Putting God first means asking for and accepting God's forgiveness today. It means starting anew to trust in God with your finances. Peter put God first. His example compels us to do the same. As we return our tithe and give our promise, we are challenged to put God first. I'm 
was the burden Christ bore at Calvary Cruel death that crushed his life In pain and agony The only precious Son of God Everything he gave To save the wretched one like me He died that I can To his hands and feet His precious blood he shed With the cross on his back They torture as they led All our sins he forgives No matter how they are Why can't we understand From him we drift afar He died, bitterly he cried. A loyal massive agony, Father, why have you forsaken me? He cried out, it is finished, in pain a broken heart. Father, in your hands I lay my spirit, then he died. Our subject for today, tests and trials. What did I say? Tests. tests and trials, something that we do not like. Out of the depth have I cried unto thee, O Lord. Lord, hear my voice, and let thine ears be attentive to the voice of my supplications. If thou, Lord, shouldst mark iniquities, O Lord, who shall stand? But there is forgiveness with thee, that thou mayest be feared. I wait for the Lord, my soul doth wait, and in his word do I hope. My soul waiteth for the Lord more than they that watch for the morning. I say, more than they that watch for the morning. Let Israel hope in the Lord, for with the Lord there is mercy, 
and with him is plenteous redemption. And he shall redeem Israel out of all his iniquities. God is good. And all the time. Let's try that one more time. God is good. And all the time. Psalm 100 verse 5. For the Lord is good. I often say, when he blesses us, he's good. And we'll all say amen to that. Not as many people say amen to this statement. When he punishes us, he's also good. When he answers our prayers, he's good. When he does not, he's good. The Bible says in Psalm 145, verse 17, The Lord is righteous in all his ways and holy in all his works. In other words, God cannot do anything wrong. Can you say amen? amen. And so God is truly good, and I thank him for that. How was your day? Good. good. Did you represent God well? <laughs> okay. You're humble, so you're not sure. <laughs> okay. Well, you look as if you did, so that's fine, that's fine. Is there anyone present? You're not a Seventh-day Adventist. May I see your hand? You are not a Seventh-day Adventist. May I see your hand? Anyone? <laughs> All right. And you come here for the first time, of course. All right, no first-timers. Well, welcome to all of you. And for those who are watching online, thank you very much for being with us. The Spirit of God is not hampered or hindered or held back by whether we're online or in a building. The Spirit of Christ is everywhere. And so he represents the Lord wherever we worship him. So thank you for connecting online. Our subject for today, tests and trials. What did I say? Tests and trials, something that we do not like, but something that is absolutely essential for anyone who has a desire to enter God's kingdom. Before I get to that message, let me ask you please, if you're not using your phone or your tablet or anything else that makes a noise, make sure it is turned off so that there's no disturbance in the house of God. I hope you find that request reasonable. Favor number two, while I'm speaking, pray for me. And say, who has prayed for me so far since we started on? Ah, may the Lord bless you endlessly. May the Lord bless you. And that's a prayer with my eyes open. May the Lord bless you. And for those of you who have not yet prayed, tonight is as good a time as any to say, Lord, that man is struggling, which he always is. Please put your words in his mouth. It is based on Jeremiah chapter 1, verse 9. Then the Lord put forth his hand and touched my mouth. And the Lord said unto me, Behold, I have put my words, my words, in thy mouth. And that's all I want to speak, the words of God. Favor number three, think as you listen. Reason within yourselves under the guidance of the Spirit of God. Isaiah 118, come now and let us reason together, saith the Lord. Let's reason, says God. I thank God he's a reasonable and a reasoning God. You know, Mark 12, 28, and one of the scribes came, and having heard them reasoning together, Jesus reasoned with his audience. Um, Acts 17 and Acts 18 and Acts 24, Paul reasoned. As Christians, we must reason as we present truth. We serve a God who loves to reason. Let us pray. Father in heaven, we come to you in the name of Jesus, someone equal with yourself, Someone, Lord, who said, let there be light. And someone who said on the cross, it is finished. Someone who said to John on the Isle of Patmos, I am he that liveth and was dead, and behold, I am alive forevermore. In his name. The name of the one who said, the prince of this world cometh and hath nothing in me. In the name of the one who said to Martha, I am the resurrection and the life. In his name. We come to you and we ask you first, quickly, Father, if you see anything unlike you in us, remove it, dear God, with the divine detergent of the blood of your Son. Cleanse us, dear God. A deep cleaning, Father, not just the surface. Put within us a love for righteousness, just because it's right, because that's the way you are. 
Bless all those who've come, every family, every guest. Bless those online, their father. Let the message you give to me bless everyone in his or her particular circumstances. Father, I pray again for anyone who may have contracted the coronavirus. In the precious, powerful name of Jesus, heal those persons, dear God. Touch them and heal them just because you do not like to see suffering. Now, Father, put your words in my mouth. Grant me the humility of Jesus. And let me listen when the Spirit tells me, say that or don't say that. Let me listen that you might be glorified and your people blessed. I offer this prayer from my heart in Jesus' name. Let God's people say, Amen and Amen. What's our subject? Tests. Ah, that was quick. Tests and trials. It is, uh, looks like a little after 6.15. I'll release you by 7. Genesis 2, reading from verse 16. Genesis chapter 2, reading from verse 16. And I read from the King James Version of the Bible. Genesis chapter 2, reading that passage I have read more times in the, in the, in the pulpit, I suppose, than any other passage of Scripture. Genesis 2, 16, 17. When you found it, say amen. amen. And the Lord God commanded the man, saying, Of every tree of the garden thou mayst freely eat, but of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil thou shalt not eat of it, for in the day thou eatest thereof thou shalt surely die. This was a test. A test for sinless people. Let me say immediately, if sinless people needed a test, what about sinful people? Adam and Eve were tested by God. Adam and Eve did not ask God to make them. He just made them. But they had to let him know that they're glad, they love him more than anything else, and that they wanted to remain in a sinless environment. They had to demonstrate that individual choice. And so God said, of every tree of the garden, God is a very, as we said, reasonable. Now, if you read Genesis 1.29, it says, And God said, Behold, I've given you every herb bearing seed, which is upon the face of all the earth. Hmm? Fruit trees weren't only in the Garden of Eden. They were all over the earth. And remember, God gave Adam dominion over all the earth. So Adam could have gone for a walk, a nature walk, and taken of any fruit tree on the earth. Now, of all the trees on this planet, when God made it, God reserved one for himself. You didn't hear what I said. God could have said, Adam, all the trees are mine except one. That one's yours. God reversed it. All trees are available to you except one. Now, that's an easy test to pass, you would think. Child Guidance, page 79, paragraph 5, Ella White writes, It was the least test the Lord could devise. The Lord could give the holy pair in Eden. It was the least test. And in Christ's triumphant, page 20, paragraph 6, He fell under the smallest test that God could devise to prove his obedience. It was an easy test. Let me extend my dealing with God's goodness. God tells you and me, you've got $100, give me 10. Hmm? Could God ask for 90? Yes, because all 100, come on, is his. Unless you can prove you invented gold and silver and crude oil and whatever else constitutes wealth. God tells us, you hold on to 90. Give me 10. And God can't get that 10. God is so good. And we're talking about tests and trials, but I like to talk about the goodness of God. God said, look, I made seven days. You take six. Give me one. Ah, you don't love God. You're not saying anything. Come on, can somebody say amen? God said, you take six. Give me one. And people say, no way. <laughs> I mean, 
God is good? And all the time. I love God. God is a nice person. I love him and I like him. As I tell in the past, I believe, there are some relatives we don't particularly like, but we have to love them because they don't <laughs> we're always glad when they don't visit. We, don't, we love them, but we don't necessarily like them. But I like God and I love God. Anyway, we go back to the test of every tree of the garden thou mayest freely eat. A test for perfect people. Adam sinned. And we have sinful people now. We come into this world inheriting a nature that prefers to rebel against God. It, is, it leans in the direction of obedience, disobedience. That's the way we are born. Now, here's what God says to us. Let us go to uh, Mark chapter 12. We'll read from verse 28. Our subject, test and trials. God had to prove Adam and Adam failed. God still has to prove us. Because we're preparing for a world where there'll be no more sin. Do you have Mark 28? Not 28, sorry, Mark 12, reading from verse 28. Let me pray again. Father, as I continue, please tighten your grip on all my faculties. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. And one of the scribes came, and having heard them reasoning together, and perceiving that he answered them well, asked him, Which is the first commandment of all? And Jesus answered him, the first of all the commandments is, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our Lord is one God, one God, and thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, and with all thy soul, with all thy mind, with all thy strength. This is the first commandment. Now listen again. With all thine heart. Not some of it. With all. Now, love God with the heart. But here's what the Bible says about that organ. The heart is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked. How can that heart love God? But the Bible says the love of God is shed abroad in our heart. God has to put that in us, then we express it. We love him because he first loved us. And so Jesus told that scribe and he's telling us we must love God with all our heart with all our soul, with all our mind, with all our strength. Now, listen to how the psalmist summarizes that without knowing he's summarizing it because it wasn't written in his time. Go to Psalm 103. Psalm 103. Here's one verse that sums up all of that beautifully. Psalm 103. You've probably read it several times as I did before noticing what I'm about to say. Psalm 103, reading verse 1. Now, I'll let you read it for me. What does verse 1 say? Bless the Lord, O my soul, and... Thank you. Say it again and stress the word I'm looking for. And all that is with... Now, what's in within you? All your heart, all your soul all your mind, all your strength. In Deuteronomy 6, all your might. And in Mark 12, 33, all your understanding. With everything within you, love me. Now, if I were to say, how many of you love God? All hands would go up. And they always go up. But you see, we are saved by faith. But how are we judged? By works. In other words, God says, you say you love me, fine. I take you at your word, let me test it. Doesn't John 14, 15 say, if you love me, come on, keep my commandments. There must be a test. And this love for me must be so strong now, it will survive in the new world to come. Ah, you didn't hear what I said. This love for me now, this devotion to me, this total surrender to me, it must be of such a concentrated completeness that it will survive for an eternity. Let's go to Job chapter 1. 
Job chapter 1. Before we go to Job 1, let's go to Exodus 20. What's Exodus 20 well known for? The commandments, yes. Very good. We have Exodus 20, book number 2, chapter number 20. You read from verse 1 to 3. Do you have that? And God spake all these words, saying, I am the Lord thy God, which have brought thee out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of bondage. Now, read verse 3. Thou shalt have no other gods before me. Keep in mind, God is telling that to a people who just came out of what country? Which was the powerful country then. The Egyptians worship the sun, the hawk, the crocodile, the cat, the dog, the hyena. <laughs> if it moved, the, the Egyptians worshiped it. Are you following me? They came out of a polytheistic society and God is saying, thou shall have no other gods before me. Now don't take that to mean God first, then you worship the snake, the hawk, the sun. No, no, no. You must have one God and that's me. In other words, your, your affections, your intellect, your strength, whatever all that makes you who you are must be focused on me. It's not easy to do that, but it's easy to say it. God has to test our profession of faith. Now go to Job chapter 1. 27 after 6. We're in good time. Job chapter 1. We read from verse 6. A well-known incident in the Bible. Do you have Job? Job is the oldest book of the Bible, written by Moses while he was in the wilderness for 40 years. I didn't say it contains the oldest information. I said it's the oldest book. Genesis contains the oldest information, the creation, but Job is the oldest book written in the Bible. You have Job chapter 1, reading from verse 6. Now there was a day when the sons of God came to present themselves before the Lord, and Satan came also among them. And the Lord said unto Satan, Whence comest thou? Then Satan answered the Lord and said, From going to and fro in the earth, and from walking up and down in it. And the Lord said unto Satan, Hast thou considered my servant Job, that there is none like him in the earth, a perfect and an upright man, one that feareth God and escheweth evil? What a privilege it is to have God bragging on you. Hmm? God is bragging, if I can use that term for God. Actually, God is the only one with the right to brag. Are you following me? Anyone who can say, let there be light and light comes, he can brag as much as he likes. And I will step off the stage and let him occupy that stage by himself and do all the bragging and get all the praise. And so God says, hast thou considered my servant Job? Hast thou considered my servants at Petersburg SDA Church? There's none like them in the United States. They fear me. They avoid evil. They love each other. There's no backbiting. There's no unrest. Have you considered my servants in St. Petersburg? Then Satan answered the Lord and said, Doth Job fear God for naught? Ah. <laughs> Hast not thou made a hedge about him and about his house and about all that he hath on every side? Thou hast blessed the work of his hands, and his substance is increased in the land. But put forth now thy hand, and take away something he has. And you'll see who you're dealing with. That man you just bribed on will leave you. I got a call, a text from a friend of mine who runs a health facility in a certain country on the face of the earth. And one of the clients is suffering from severe depression. When this person was in college, the person was strict about not taking exams on Sabbath. Other members of the church took exams on Sabbath. 
Because for many of us, education is a God that will take care of us in the future. And so we take exams on Sabbath. Because of her fidelity to God, things didn't go her way. She's depressed, threatening to leave God because God didn't do what she didn't honor her faith. Jacob, Joseph, was faithful to God. Are you following me? He went to prison. God had to test Joseph to see how deep the roots of his commitment ran. This young lady, under test by God, is ready to leave God because God disappointed her. God does not disappoint. We disappoint God. Let me tell you something. The Lord has to bring a test into your life and mine to expose the genuineness of what we say with our lips. Man, so the devil said, put forth thy hand now and touch all that he has. Take away his material things. Take away his house. Take away his car. Give him the pink slip on the job and then see if he loves you. This is not meant to discourage you. It's meant to cause you to think twice and thrice. Only eight people entered that ark. In the days of Noah, eight. When Lot, in the days of Lot, Sodom and Gomorrah, Adma, Zeboim, and Bela, the cities of the plain, one righteous man escaped. The two daughters were not righteous. Righteous daughters don't sleep with their father after getting him drunk. Are you following me? The wife wasn't righteous. One righteous man from five cities. But I'm sure that before the fires fell, everybody loved God. And so the devil said, put forth thy hand now and touch all that he hath and he will curse thee to thy face. And the Lord said unto Satan, behold, all that he hath is in thy power only upon himself. Put not forth thy hand. So Satan went forth from the presence of the Lord. And there was a day, verse 13 of, Genesis, of Job 1, when his sons and his daughters were eating and drinking wine in the eldest brother's house. And behold, a, a messenger came and said to Job, thy sons and thy daughter, the, 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 the oxen were plowing and the cattle feeding beside them. And the Sabaeans came and took them away. Yea, they have slain the servants with the edge of the sword, and I only am escaped to tell, alone to tell thee. Calamity number one. Now they all fell upon Job in one day. When God removes his hand from the devil a little bit, it is amazing how quickly calamity and catastrophe will come, one after the other. While he was yet speaking, verse 16, there came also another and said, The fire of God is fallen from heaven and has consumed the servants and the sheep and burned up the servant and the sheep and consumed them, and I only am escaped to tell thee. The next calamity, 17, the camels were taken by the Chaldeans. Next calamity, all the sons and daughters killed in the house because a wind came, blew down the house, all 10 of them dead. Verse 20. Read verse 20 for me. Then Job arose, rent his mantle, come on, shaved his head, come on, fell upon the ground and left the church and cursed God and complained, why me? He worshiped God. The devil has to see, there's nothing I can do to that man that will turn him from God. The devil has to see that and God has to show him that. But God shows that to him in our lives. Job stayed faithful to God. I cannot imagine the weight of sorrow Job felt. It is one thing to attend a funeral of one loved one. I'm told parents prefer to die than to bury their children. Bury all 10 of your children at the same time. Listen, God can be rough. But God will do whatever is necessary to get us ready for that land. Are you following me? Chapter 2 of the book of Job. 
Let's pray again. Father, as I continue, let your spirit instruct me clearly. Grant me that humility to listen, Father. Speak through me, please, in Jesus' name. Amen. Job chapter 2, reading from verse 1. Again, there was a day when the sons of God came to present themselves before the Lord, and Satan came also among them to present himself before the Lord. And the Lord said unto Satan, Whence comest thou? And Satan answered the Lord and said, From going to and fro in the earth, and from walking up and down in it. And the Lord said unto Satan, This is the second time now, Hast thou considered my servant Job? That there is none like him in the earth, a perfect and an upright man, one that feareth God and escheweth evil. Now finish verse 3 for me. And still, come on. He holdeth. Come on, say it again. He holdeth fast. Stop. Hold that fast which thou hast, that no man take thy crown. What is God saying? Hmm? Hold it. Tight. As if you value what you're holding, and still he holdeth fast his integrity. Now finish the verse. Although thou movest me against him to destroy him without cause. Still. You know, you see some things and all you can say is, mm, mm, mm. Because you know, I would have left God a long time ago. Still. He holds us fast. God had to test Job to the limit. So that Job, not that God can see anything that Job might see. We think we're faithful to God. We think we love God. And God says, fine, I accept what you say with your lips. Now let's look at the heart. You know what Jesus says? This people honoreth me with their, but their hearts are, I've had people say to me, I have bills. I have to work and sell. What am I supposed to do? <laughs> Why are you asking me what you're supposed to do? You're supposed to obey God. That's all I can tell you. I don't mean to say it coldly or harshly. You, are, you see, obedience is not negotiable. You don't obey God conditionally if things are right. When I have everything I need, I'm the most faithful person to God. My house is paid for, my cars have gas, my children are in school, they're doing well, everything is fine. I love Jesus. Take away one. And then, God says, see, not in order to point fingers, but to let his children know you need to come closer. You need to come closer. You are in danger of losing what I have prepared for you. When God called Abraham in Genesis 22 to kill Isaac. Let's go to verse Genesis 22. Let's read verse 10. Genesis 22, reading verse 10. What's our subject? Test. Tests and trials. 7.30. No. What time is that? Oh, 20 to 7. Do we have 20 minutes? Do you have Genesis 22? Let's read verse 10. What does verse 10 say? And Abraham did what? Stretched forth his hand and took the knife to slay him. Verse 11. And the angel of the Lord called unto him and said what? Abraham, Abraham. And he said, here am I. And he said, what? Lay not thy hand upon the lad, neither do thou anything to him. Now read the next few words. Now I know. Come on. That thou Yes, go on. Seeing thou hast not withheld, come on, thy son, thine own. God says, now says God, I know. God pushed him to the limit. If you think Job's suffering was great, consider Abraham's suffering. Abraham represents God. Isaac symbolizes Jesus. Think of God's suffering in sending Christ. Eloise said, Jesus had to ask God three times to come and die. Three times before the Father said yes. Not because the Father didn't love us, but it was not easy for the Father to give up his son. But he gave him up for you. 
when God told Abraham, offer him there upon one of the mountains which I will tell thee of, Genesis 22, verse 2. It wasn't easy for Abraham. Read the story in Patriots and Prophets. At night, when Isaac was sleeping peacefully, trusting his father, Abraham was wrestling with God that maybe this would not be necessary. God will ask you to give up that which is closest to you in order to serve him. You know why? God originally made us in his image. The image of God is to give up what's closest to him in order to save us. Are you following me? And God says, now act like me. Give up what's closest to you in order to benefit from my salvation. There must not be a shred of selfishness in the heart. Give it up. And we say, no way. I have met some people, usually young men, who had very uh, athletically gifted, were offered this, this, this to play professional sport, and they said no. They came to the truth, and they gave it up for truth. Let me tell you something. Anything you've given up for God would have been bad for you. Job chapter 2. You go back to verse 3. And still he holdeth fast his integrity, although thou movest me against him to destroy him without cause. And Satan answered the Lord and said, Skin for skin, yea, all that a man hath. Finish the verse. Will he give? Come on. For his life now. We go from possessions to life. Checking for my pulse. Life. Take my house, don't take my wife. You following me? Take my car, don't take my daughter. But didn't our son, our sin, take God's son, yes or no? Yes. yes. Our sin took his son. The devil is right. Skin for skin. All that a man hath will he give for his life. Our most precious possession is life. In Hebrews 2, 14, 15, just listen, no need to go there because we're coming back to Job. For as much then as the children are partakers of flesh and blood, he also himself likewise took part of the same, that through death he might destroy him that had the power of death, which is the devil, and deliver them who through fear of death were all their lifetime subject to bondage someone afraid of dying is in bondage and the devil knows that and so he threatens life when that threat comes we leave god daniel was tested and his life was on the line the three hebrew boys were tested their lives were on the line daniel was tested twice as far as the bible goes in chapter one he could have lost his life for not eating the king's recommended food the recommendation came from nebuchadnezzar and nebuchadnezzar did not rule by committee the bible says whom he would he slew and whom he would he left alive daniel risked his life along with hananiah mishael and azariah in daniel one in daniel three the three hebrew boys they risked their lives and nebuchadnezzar said in verse 15 of daniel three now if ye be ready that at what time ye hear the sound of the cornet flute harp sackmilk psaltery and dulcimer and all kinds of music ye fall down and worship the image which i have made well but if you worship not he shall be cast the same hour into the midst of a burning fiery furnace. And who is that God that shall deliver you out of my hand? Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego said to the king, O Nebuchadnezzar, we are not careful to answer thee in this matter. If it be so, if it comes down to this, our God whom we serve is able to deliver us, deliver us from the burning fiery furnace and he will deliver us out of thy hand O king but if not <laughs> sounds like Jesus father if thou be willing remove this cup from me nevertheless but if not be it known unto thee O king I want you to know 
Too many times we leave people guessing. Our classmates at school, they guess, is he a Christian? Is she a Christian? Because he was at the same party where he was last night. Is he a Christian? I have a friend in Maryland, and he loves to do evangelism. And, uh, but before he became an Adventist, he was in the bars and the clubs, and you know what people consider good life. And uh, some Adventist young people, someone came to minister to him, come to church and get baptized. He said, what church are you from? The Adventist church. He said, why do you have to come to church? I see your people in the same clubs where I go. Why am I coming to church? Well, the person could say nothing. Absolutely nothing. So often, our colleagues on the job don't know we're Seventh-day Adventists who honor God and express that love by obeying his commandments, particularly the fourth. Vision says, remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. If they don't know, we believe that our bodies belong to God and we're careful what we eat, what we drink, what we inhale. They don't know that because we confuse them so that we might fit in. Those three boys said, but if not, be it known unto thee, O king, we want you to know, we will not serve, I am not taking that joint. I am not taking that bear. I am not taking whatever. Now do whatever you want to do. Tied them up, threw them in the thing. They had no clue they would be saved. But their salvation was not the point. The honor of God. Somebody say amen. The honor of God was their priority, not their lives. We must come to the place where the honor of God is more valuable to us than our own lives. Because our salvation was more important to Jesus than his own life. You didn't hear what I said. Our salvation was more important to Christ than his own life. Tests and trials, they have to come. So we can see how deep go the roots of my commitment to God. Are these just words eloquently spoken or am I really committed to God? And that is only made visible by a trial and a test. Before Adam sinned, some of you are in school, and someone were to ask you, uh, are you taking math? Yes. Are you good at math? Yes. Let me see your exam results. <laughs> are you following me? Show me your grade report. You tell your teacher, oh, I, I, Professor Smith, I'm enjoying your calculus class. I know everything. He gives an exam. <laughs> are you with me? He gives an exam. You want to serve in special forces? You know, special for those soldiers that go on missions no one else can carry out. Ah, the, they don't train by going to a series of picnics. Are you following me? The training is designed to expose what? Weaknesses. Because weaknesses, they burrow down into the soul and they occupy the lowest level. And it takes a real earthquake to bring them to the surface. Many years ago, I kept a garden. The back of our house, it was a summer, it was a particularly hot summer in Michigan. And so the other ground was parched and cracked like overbaked bread, like one British poet said. So I decided I'll water the ground to get it ready to plant carrots or something that would grow quickly. In Michigan, you have two months to grow anything. <laughs> and so I went out <laughs> and I began to water. And I went inside, came back, and the ground was dry. So I watered again. Went inside for whatever reason, came back, the ground was dry. I said, man, this thing is thirsty. So I watered and watered until it became a little lake. <laughs> While I was standing watching the water go down, up popped a frog. And he looked at me as though I disturbed him, then he hopped off into the bushes. But some frogs hibernate. And they're disturbed by water. As the seasons change, they, they, they come up. The water went down where he was. <laughs> and disturbed him, and up he popped. Are you following me? That's the way God's trials are. They go down, they go down, they go down, and up pop this frog of hypocrisy, this frog of stinginess, this frog of whatever. Up pop all these little frogs, we were unaware they were sleeping in us. I 
Are you a peaceful person? Oh, yes, I'm peaceful. Then someone runs into the back of your car. Hmm? And you are surprised that you were never peaceful. You see, we don't know ourselves. We think we do, we don't. But God does. And God has to show us in love that he might fix us. Tests and trials, they must come because you and I are preparing for a world where sin will never rise the second time. The Bible says in Revelation 22 verse 3, and there shall be no more curse because there shall be no more sin and no more death. We must want that now. As we look for the second coming of Christ, and I'm finishing. Go with me to 2 Timothy chapter 4. We read that passage, uh, I think it was on Sabbath. 2 Timothy 4, let's read 7 and 8. Our subject, test and trials, we're on the down slope of the message. 10 minutes to 7. Do you have 2 Timothy chapter 4, verse 8, 7 and 8? All right, let me pray. Father in heaven, as I'm closing, continue to be with me, please. I sincerely ask of you, in Jesus' name, amen. I have finished. I have fought a good fight. I have finished my course. I have kept the faith. Henceforth, there is laid up for me a crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, shall give me when? At that day, and not to me only, but unto all them also that love his appearing. And that love is obvious in the lifestyle. They love his appearing. It dominates the thinking. It affects how they spend money, where they live. Because nothing must interfere with readiness for the coming of Christ. Go to Hebrews chapter 9. Hebrews 9, 27 and 28. You have Hebrews 9, 27, 28. Read 27 for me. And as it is appointed unto man once to die, come on. And after this the judgment, so Christ was once what? Offered to? Of many. And unto them that look for him shall he appear the second time without sin unto salvation. Paul says, those that love his appearing. Paul says in Hebrews, to those that look for him. And that looking dominates their lives. Let me close the book as a visual symbol that I'm finishing. God has to test you. Your high school teacher tests you. Your college professor tests you. If you're studying medicine, you've got to take step one, step two, step three. At every stage in life, there is a test. You want to play for the NFL? You've got to go to the combines. Let's see what you're made of. This isn't peewee football. This is NFL. This isn't some baseball for six-year-olds. This is the, 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 the America's game. We have to test you. What are you made of? What's under that suit? The purpose of trials is not suffering. The purpose of trials is perfection. Get us right. Get us straight with God. I don't know what's going on in your life. I'm not asking. But whatever befalls you, there are two ways to suffer. One, God allows for our salvation. Two, we bring on ourselves. So Peter tells us in 1 Peter 4.15, let none of you suffer as a murderer or as a thief or as an evildoer or as a busybody in other men's matters. Don't suffer by things you brought on yourself. But if you be reproached for the name of Christ, if he suffer for righteousness' sake, happy are ye. Are you under test by God? Don't answer me. Make up your mind to pass. When Jacob wrestled with God by the brook, midnight, he thought at first it was Esau come to kill him. He was fighting for his life. And when I read this story, tears come to my eyes. I imagine Jacob, dark of night. He thinks this is someone who came to either Esau or some assassin Esau hired, and he's struggling for his life. It's not a wrestling match with a, with, a, with, a, with a referee. He is struggling for his life. The person fighting with him touches him in the hip, dislocates his hip. Now he's fighting on one foot. And tears come to my eyes when I read that. It was Jesus Christ. 
Then the person said, let me go because it's almost daybreak. Jacob said, tell me what he said. I will not let thee go except thou bless me. Now, the Lord has sent a trial into your life. Your time to wrestle. You tell God, no matter what you do to me, I'm not letting you go. I don't care what you allow in my life. I don't care what you send. I am not letting you go. We must say like Brother Job, though he slay me. Finish the verse. Yet will I trust him. That's the point to which God wants us to come. When we arrive at that point, God can call the devil and say, come. Have you seen that brother at St. Petersburg? Go test him. And God sits down with his cool drink in heaven and watches. Not bothered at all. But too many times when the devil comes after us, God is biting his nails. What's he going to do? <laughs> Will he leave me? God biting his nails. Because he can't trust us to be faithful. Make up your mind right where you sit. Tell God with respect. Father, regardless of what you do to me, I'm holding on to you. How many will tell God that right now? Can I see your hand? I'm holding on to you. I don't care what you do to me. I'm holding on to you. Stand up with me. And I mean it. I don't care what you do. You have to kill me to get me off you. I'm not letting you go. The devil tempted Christ in the wilderness. It was so terrible he collapsed. God had to send angels to help him. Matthew 4, 11. There was no one around. Only wild animals, they couldn't help him. In the Garden of Gethsemane, it was so tough, he began to bleed through his skin. He sweat through his skin. God sent an angel because the disciples were sleeping. But Jesus, he hung in there because he saw you. Now, let's see God put a smile on his face and put a frown on the devil's face. Take it for God's sake. He has a reward for you that you cannot imagine. And one day, by the way, the greatest honor God can give you is to suffer for him. It's a strange honor. Nobody wants it. But the greatest honor God can bestow upon a man or a woman is to suffer for him. And so you're faithful at school and your friends laugh at you five days a week and you take it. You're harassed on the job and you take it. And God looks down and all the angels applaud. And God says, you see that mansion? That's for him. I will only let him be tried in so, so far as he can take it. Because the Bible says in 1 Corinthians 10, 13, they have no temptation taken you. The word temptation means trial. But such as is common to man. But God is faithful who will not suffer you to be tempted above that you're able. Meaning you can take it. It's a biblical guarantee. You can take it. Believe that word and take it. I went to the dentist to have a procedure. He stuck a needle up my mouth and I felt it at the root. And I, ooh, he said, hang in there for me. I said, hang in there for you. He said, hang in there for me. That's what he said. I'm there trying to look like a ninja warrior. And he, oh, oh. But I hung in there and finally he did what he had to do. And God says to us, the needle has gone to the root of your life. And you feel the pain. And he says to my son with our head in his arms, hang in there for me. Because my name is on the line universally. Hang in there for me, says God. I know you lost the job. Hang in there for me. Heads bowed, eyes closed. Father in heaven, life is not always easy, but you never promise easy life. You promise power to live the life you would have us to live. Did God help us to understand that tests and trials come to every living human being? Because you are preparing us for a life in which sin cannot rise the second time. We have to come to the place, Father, where our commitment to you is more than 100%. All our heart, all our soul, all our mind, all our strength, all our might, all our understanding. Psalm 103 verse 1, 
I will bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. Let this be our posture tonight. Let this be our choice. Like Jacob, I will not let thee go except thou bless me. Like Job, ah, though he slay me, yet will I trust him. Like Jesus, if thou be willing, remove this cup from me. Nevertheless, not my will, but thine be done. Give us that mindset, dear God. Let us not collapse under every trial, however heavy and hot it may be. Give us strength to endure. Because somewhere in us, we really do love you. But as you said in your own word in Psalm 103, verse 14, He knoweth our frame. He remembers that we're dust. And dust tends to panic. Dust cries. Dust tends to regret. But Father, you made us from dust. But fill us with your spirit, that spiritual gold. Sustain us tonight. Sustain us tonight. That we may sleep knowing all is right between you and us. Hear the Spirit of God. I offer it from my heart. In Jesus' name, let God's people say, Amen, amen. and Amen. Sang bulu benda kata lelaki turang akan meramu ni bulu benda kata dorbo kena guna lelaw ni bulu benda kata nado taleta kata pot pot ni pinggan rabiongo na hope channel se hope tv awal itu tak kau maru kau bawa tak ni satu tarat itu guna yang lo tambu yang na vito kay tua yang na vito lama ni bunua yang na vito wasa wasa yang na vito marabi kena na vito bunua kena ngah yang dan do bagor orang tu kau mungkin na yang na stesen ni benda kau na hope channel sanu kau masih ni na bakal longat tiki guna kalau selebih itu guna ni ni bom Sulewi ko endona bulu bom, baleta ni narau ni bukai ko, me tosa dah ke nono mubiwa kani, tosa dah ke nono mubiki lay, tosa dah ke telengah nono mubula, mata ke nono turang. Nanti wasin disongo ni go, endana bayi demu itu mana, na B attitude. Siapa itu bo, kini bola bola ni mata ni tu ni kalau dona dor masu, tapi kima min dahulu lama, kima min sabar bagar bayi bagar buli tenggo ni itu bo ni nono ni mata ni tu. Bola tadi nombor ni tobo, saya ni nombor ni tobo. Kita bukan drama nombor ni bukan di taki, bukan drama nombor ni bukan buli di, bukan drama nombor ni bukan lu taki. Mena boh rong rong tadi kita ada nombor ni, ada sekali nombor ni kuah, cisu ni mau bola. Amen. Enam hari dua hari lima tadi kita bawa, nombor ni kat mana uli kau bikin, dan kita bawa lagi usaha nak gaya lakukan kita bukan dia bawa binti. Eka enam hari dua hari lima bawa. Blessed are they that mourn, for they shall be comforted. Sa kalungata ko ira era sa daw tagi. Nira na bong dingui. Siya sa kalungata ko ira na daw tagi. Nira na bong dingui. Na imbalambalin ni tagi. Kunti ko nitin ko. Tagi baka ni alo laylay. Tagi baka bulat ni salal na kobate. Siya tagi baka rin sa mati o momo. Siya mati o ney. Siya mati baka na alubiyong siya gay sudo nga. Siya mati baka na alubiyong siya baki rosa nga bulukan dua. Siya gay sira kamay na nga una ni bula. Musuh tu buat orang ni lelaki tu tukung orang berusaha nak bagawati, gaya mai kau lebih ayat orang bola. Kau beka ya nak tangi tu kau niti go? Se tangi beka ni salam bati kenda mai, se lambat mai orang mu koro, lambat mai orang mu itu itu ko, yang dua nak tangi lamba kau kau. Ebi nak ambil dalak orang bos ni kalau mereka beri kenda, se tangi bawa dah mai tu kau niti go. Bola tu ni dua tangi, sekarang suatu ni ala lori ribi nak ambil kenda. Di dua saat tiga bumi saat tiga sah biar tanah yang lalu ya sah nara itu kerbau kian tu. Isa, kalau tu tiga bangko sah rongkom itu tangi mana asini balaya sah dua bangko sah boleh dengu dua bangko sah lain kerana dua nak kau kau ya tu. Ya kalau bangko kalau mana nabur nabur entah boleh tiga kena nabur nabur na lay lay ngan di musik yang nara rawa nak kena view nak kena musik bis entah dua mak. Na nabur nabur telang aku entah siapa di taleta kan bin dua tangi tiga sen dua rara rawa tiga. Na lay lay ngan di kara rawa esok tadi. Na kian lebih nak telengah. Ia na bosan ko na tagi, sendau tagi, na bosan bawa lagi mon. Ia kau pun na bosan makiri ki pentio. Pentio kaya endua na kian endau to mon, for or to lament one. 
to bewail, to lament or grief. Dibuna kami dengan Allah kau yang nanda buru nanda buru buru nacium melata ni baka sam mewir mewata melata itu go. Mewir baka usi minit dua sama ti melata go naga udah dirarau mewir. Minit dua sama ti kita nak kaya dua ya tu dua dress ulang serangan insul minit dua musi ti kaya dorka. Era darah insul tanga era sangai baka kamburang tu yang go nanda drumsa. Ser datuk karena insul lolloa lupa ke dene yaya di sasaudi. Mungkin masih mana ukuku, toro tu doh kau nak drone diulu, nak kubi, se zamura kisarnga era lolo, era segan di kana, era segan di gunu, guna tagi, nado tagi, se na tagi aso, kau yang nak kaiti nanti baby talun tagi ni kuat, ni kaiti kau cisu sakalung kat kau yang nado tagi, go na tagi aso, aku lain udah zamura nado tagi aso, nama tato bekenda, nado tagi aso nado tagi ni rarawa. Na tagi ni mosi, na tagi ni sa tarai kena dina, na bibi ni rarawa kena mosi ni ka e adotiko. Oh, cekopi, ena mga tigimu wa se tolu sa kumul kabitu tiki na itin kaba. Asa adresu laka na nona isulu ko cekopi, kabawudo na isulu tanga rotu kena tolona, katangi dhaka na lumena me bogi bunga. Ani sa adha ini mwa ane tukutuku ni sa amate o Josefa. Tukur ini kerana tukur tukur ni rum dressulakan orang orang isulu sangai darah orang isulu tanga sangai tangi tu membogi buka sama siti koya terai koya ni sa yali nalubiana ia tal tala kata tukur cisu sa kelonga tak koi rendau tangi nada apa me tangi tangi tal tala yang orang orang berkata kata mau kuti kendali sana biar let makau yang ini tukur tukur ni iskeli Iskeli wasi adi waktu kita itu lukut kita itu tukut tukut tetoka itu tukut tukut bibi telang aw bawa bot ini politik atau politik yang day day. Karena kita itu lalu naik ukuk ni kalau Israel ini salah kau tak kau main cerita rupi kat tu kena kena yang lagi vali kasa kaji kau kau kena tambah tu sabu yang sulit ada lini ni kasa tu buat dua orang tambah ni way way ni bol bola. Kamu kau ada baca sama tak ni berita soal ni bol bola. Wasi awal lalu naik iskeli satu kuni kena talun tak kau iskeli. Ni saya tu mungkin ayah lo tamu saya tu mungkin buat anak kalung gaya suka nak dorong dulu na gaya kau tu kau lelus tali ceru silami merawat kau ceru silami melihat bagai tak ibu buat nak kau bawa lolo ma eh tak tu ya na vale ni kalung vale ni soro na vale ni sok kalung mai ceru silami kau bawa vuna na nonda kau bawa bumbula na isireli ki papiloni ona reiva ni lalang kau itu dorong dengan dua lili kina na angelosi era sange vakam bekina na mana mana boleh sila era kau tu mana mata kau Karena ibu tak kira, bunuh yang dah betul kira, na itu pun tak mungkin soros, saya nak bunuh yang sokal itu yang kira nak kalung. Kena fikir kamu si sila, na mana mana bunuh si sila, era sah kau tu mai, memai, garabi na bunuh di sokal, ya na bunuh di soro. Na wase dua, sangka me tukun itu kau me iskeli na ka ena dak, me boleta na ka ya tu tiko, me ceru silami. Okay, usah na tomaran gugil mula me iskeli, kini apa? Asa kai buat kau coba, mula kau boleh hani ena lama di koro, gua buat lagi lulus kau bagai sulu lini ni tu. Kau itu kau buat endo na tapai way di bola bola, tapai way di bola bola. Mula kau boleh ena lama di koro, ena lama di ceru selebi. Kau bola na ibu kau tak kila kila ena endera na temata era sa vutungu kau gonggolo ena vuku di kau si sila kena sa zaka ena lama di koro, arah? Tagi vutungu Gogolo, ia biru tu tali so sa kai koko ni warung itu tiko. Dola ki muri koe lomu di koro. Kaya na ramu ramu, mereka kui di bos sota nama tamu dou. Kaku telengah di dou ya lolo loma. Dou bukan bete ir sarangan ngasi. Kena dorobou, nagoni lewa, kena nagoni lay lay, kena lew telengah. Endo kaku di toro ya di buah, endo na tamu ada sabu lay tu. Kamu dou bukan teki bu mada, ena nunggu pale tamu. Oh. Sabu kerja tak kau tu mesti kelir nak kamu si sila kena kamu allah lama. Rosong mulai kelir pun agak sih. Rasah bukit bukan anda aku kena balik di sorok. Kamu tanda kena tanpa tanpa di singa. Merasa sokal utang itu kena mati di singa. Sabu reda. Sabu kerja tak mesti kelir nak kamu si sila go. Sabu kerja nak kalau mesti kelir reda reda. Reda kau itu apa? Kau sulu lini itu. Itu yang anda dorang tawaya. Wei ni bola bola. Sabu itu kuni buat kau turut kau tawaya wei ni bola bola go. Zuri lama di koro. Bagaimana kita kira-kira tak kira nak tamat di kalung? Oh, dia memang tak kira-kira tak kira kau iskali. 
kau iskeli. Boga taki la kila takira, o ira era tagi tiko, era vutu go tiko, era gogolo tiko, era gogolo vaka na kabo e sisila sa vaka tiko mo e tseru selemi. Aga re dara bibi ni kaka o tisu. Sa kalongata ko ira sa dao tagi. O ni mina kata meo votaweo ko e tolo ni tuku tuku bibi. E na iwasi ni ga uno go. Matai, na era tagi vaka tiko, na nonrei vala vala, na tamata ni kalou. Ke ni karua, era tagi vaka ni sa asenga ni ndo kai na kalou se voka roko roko taki na kalou. Ke ni katolu, na thaba ki vakava na kalou veira na dao tagi, se na isau ni nonra tagi tiko. Tagi aso, tagi mosi, tagi rarawa. Sa kalongata ko ira sa dao tagi, ni ra na voka dengui. Era tagi vaka tiko, ni vaka bene bene i tiko na i vola vola dha. Ena lomu ni lotu ba karisto. Mi vaka saranga e ka tiko iskeli. Era gogo lo vaka tiko e do na i lala. Era tagi yeso taka, era mosita. Ni sa vaka e dhori tiko na i vola vola dha. Ena lomu e isireli. Mi vaka lomani. O yuko pote ke yao e dai dai. E ka viko chisu ni kalongata na dao tagi. Dha mo tagi vaka. Mo tagi vaka ni sa vaka bene bene i tiko na i vola vola dha. Kaya na kalu, vi ka kaya na kalu buat na Inggris, buat na turang aku turut tiga na wain bola bola. Bola aku mulai dengan lomba di korel, lomba di ceru selemi. Kamu lah ni bukan taki laki lah na ender na temata. Era sa butu gu kagogolou, era buku di kamu ngasih sila kevenga sa zaka era lomba di koro. Bau mositi ikut tu ni baka bene bene iti kono i bola bola dah era lomba iti kono iti kono era lomba di lotu bak Kristo. Era vonua quando o laça camata o que não valeu. Vamos sentir hoje essa tavigo, ganego. Vamos sentir que anda tudo isso a osso tudo na vale de vivesu. Era não rebula na luvenda, na tavida, na ganenda. Quais são na caia viu na cata na calou, cada dono menda tangi vaca. Vamos sentir que anda na butaco, lamba, cudo, que nem vagarra o cão cão. Vea zovi ena tau ndako ni mga wati. Vea mbuta kodhi, vea zovi ena lomu ni mga wati. Oa mga kalamani. Kao chisu me musiti kenda. Menda tangi vaka. Bo tangi vaka tuna nonda vonua. Bo tangi vaka tuna kaya yadho mga voli muliti kenda tiku. Sini kena balbali menda tangi vaka nga me vonua lutu vaka karisto viti. Mga kalamani saga. Tangi vaka kaya iskeli. Me tangi vaka ni vaka bene bene itiko na ivola vola dha. E como é que eu entendo que eu matei o Cristo que não vou morrer? Eu entendo que eu matei o Cristo que não vou morrer. Eu entendo que eu matei o Cristo que não vou morrer. Eu entendo que eu matei o Cristo que não vou morrer. Eu entendo que eu matei o Cristo que não vou morrer. Eu entendo que eu matei o Cristo que não vou morrer. Eu entendo que eu matei o Cristo que não vou morrer. Eu entendo que eu matei o Cristo que não vou morrer. Eu entendo que eu matei o Cristo que não vou morrer. Eu entendo que eu matei o Cristo que não vou morrer. Eu entendo que eu matei o Cristo que não vou morrer. Eu entendo que eu matei o Cristo que não vou morrer. Eu entendo que eu matei o Cristo que não vou morrer. Eu entendo que eu matei o Cristo que não vou morrer. Eu entendo que eu matei o Cristo que não vou morrer. Eu entendo que eu matei o Cristo que não vou morrer. Eu entendo que eu matei o Cristo que não vou morrer. Eu entendo que eu matei o Cristo que não vou morrer. Eu entendo que eu matei o Cristo que Kalau macam mana ni? Nalol tu bakar Kristo, kau baca. Esa asing ni bulat tak kan? Nalol lama. Kena bilu mana ni? Waktu kena bulat semua semua, kena bulat bawa tembui. Entah sah tak kali tak ni telinga. Mungkin bulat bawa Kristo, kena kaya bila kata Yesus membawa izuri. Kena kerana macam mana ni? Nadau tagi, era tagi zaka. Ni temata, era sah zaki tak keti kau nak kalu. Bukan sah tak. Ni zaki taki na kalou ena kenda mai liu na tomata. Ono wili ngana kaka o te vita. Ena sabi don rou tinu kadiwa. Tiki ne don rou tolu sanga vulu ka ono. Itugu tugu bibi. Kai wango te vita. Na uthi wa isa dame mai na matangu. Ni rasa sanga ni vaga mbauta na nombu ni vunau. Maka sa mataka. Rivers of water run down my run down my eyes. Because they keep not thy law. Kavi ko chisu e dae dae sa kalou ngata ko ira na dao tagi. Na dao tagi vaka tala tala, kila tale veo na vosa ni tevita. Kao tevita turanga, na kena mo siti au na buto raki tuna nomu ni vunau. Ni vaka vava ni tuna nomu ni lawa. E dave me vakana wudhi wai na wai mai matangu. Ane munu atini me kalmani. Ni reza ni sangarevi tiko na matakau. Ni reza ni sasenga tiko na kalou. Ni rasa gerai itu kan kalau tadi. Ni reza ni tamu atas apa kita kita lihat tengah tu nak ada ikaristo. Ni dah reza ni sah butuh lagi tu nak kebutu ni singa nak nak singa ni bukan dengan nak kalau. Ni dah reza. Lo iru lebih anda nak dorbo kerana ni lewa. Ni rasa tali tak bukan lebu nak lasa bukan pura-pura. Basah ada singa tabu. Wah macam mana kamu lama. 
na temor na kai tali tanga do do me buto regitu na no de singa tambu na kalou na sogo na vei voli na nganga de bo musiti ke ndu se sanga kai na kalou me musiti ko matke eu kala me kalman kenderao ni satu kuniti ko burbure de dai ni sa boko no ne buro na kalou sa tawe nga sa sanga ni do do me tiko tali se me muria na lotu ba karisto gona buna sa tumbu ki na ne fogaro ko ko ne fogaro da na no da viti Bola tama tama. Oke mai mana gas ini lotu. Ke be bisa mo gereta ke tigo be kemni. Ni sampo ko nei bunau. Ye ni kai o te vita. Ni dabe be bokana wi di wai na wai ni botane ni reda ni buto ra ke tigo nei bunau. Ye be e a. E na buku ni ka vitu ni singa. Na no na singa ni bo di tigo na kala. O reda tigo to ni alo alo. No na le sumo mo se se na uli buno ko di tigo mai nei bunu weti ni. Do na e do e do rinta ka. Ra sa gara ni mata ka o tigo ira na tigo na uli buno. Sako tu mamo se se na le na le muni no na ra rawa ni ra sa poka da da ni buna usa dusi okoe na karua ni buna boka kuni da kawu ikon dora mata kawu deu deu de dia boka lelai sa ala kumai e do vei ra na gara mata kawu tiko kuti kumai dora tiki ni pia bo kuti kumai tiki ni pia bo sa ga dusi ata langa vi mo se se e sa na kandu ra ba tu ra ra be rua bo le tui da ka kuman mo ten kuman mo se ga ila kumai na do na tu ra go sa ga kuti kumai ko dora tiki ni pia bo le tui ga da ka human right mo se se gori no na i vuna una kalau gori no na do do no but this is my right Gono no gudo dono, meu garabo na kai do dono ga meu garabo. Meu kalamani, go e so na kai, viu na kata viu ko na kalou, viu na kata tala nga viu, meu musiti ko musiti au. Vou musiti ko tu, nisa avonga reo taki nga viu ko na tou do gongo na kuila do mdabu. Andora ka no da tangi da katiko me mono lutu pa karni stoviti. E da tangi da na mati ni tu e da tangi di rarave liu taki. E e senga ni da toura na gauna me da tangi da wana kalou. Na lewo ni garaib mata kao ke na kalou da da wale ke da nga. E vaga beni beni atu na ta mata. Kabuga vuna me vaga elia na nona zaka zaka mana kau kau na kalu vekenda cheme sa wa seva tiki ne walu na zama tala me tata ki zaka tala tala se zama tala me tata ki zaka chisu ronga zana kaka cheme sa tangi asuma ka nona rei bal bal zaha vaka tekir toro bole ka ni wana kalu ka na toro bole ka me veke mundo koko ya vaka sama sama taka na lenga mundo oi ke mundo na lomo lomo rua do mai ra rawa ka gogo lou ka tangi Me vuki no mundo ndrendre me gongolo ke no mundo marao me mata bebeku do boka bolu bolu mutegi ke mundo na mata ni turanga kana la veti ke mundo za ke koko ai onga ndrendre mo boka tete ani vei ko ni tutungo sa rutin tunga na masu mina ka bole muturanga na singi ni kuwa mina ka bole muna mo de boka ke wena bong sa na bole mata ka lele lele de dai kira muni sala bati ke yau ni muso te o ni urita mata i bolu bolu e asi ni masu ni tangi aso ya e asi ka ni masu ni rarawa ya e ana masu ni nomol tunga na bula Ya be kalau mana? Oh TV tu, kait itu TV tu. Saya ngah crisis ini ya. Cepat saya kait itu kau nak langgeng itu kau. Iku mati kau mau tanya so. Lupa nak kena isulu. Toro lupa lupa rek. Zaman rek nak dorong diulu. Lolo baka. Tanya so baka. Gogo lolo baka. Zaman kau cepat saya nombi bal bal dah. Nombi bal bal dah. Bagi biar kau kau ini nombi do tanya so baka nombi bal bal dah. Nombi langgeng. Nombi bal bal dah. Kalau mereka kalau mana, nak kau pun nak kita nak masuk ni kalau bela tu bukai kian dengan dia lelai lagi, bukai kian dengan dia tiga bulan dua orang bulan bulan. Bagan di kian apa, bagan gak, bagan lewa, mereka ni basi kau mana kalau mereka zaman raka, na waktu kena wuto ni langga satu gua bukai kian dah. Oh, mereka bukan musuh tiga ni kuat sakit nak kau nombor satu, tanya usah takkan nombor bulan, nombor tanya usah takkan nombor bulan. Dari dari dua mereka nak tengah dan roti kau betul betul mana lewa. Esa ngan diwo timu. Nro sa mai vei mbuta kodi tiku. Re re sa dren dren tiku no no mu kalau ta ni moi kina. Ia eo vea paka mosu tiku. Kao chisu se esa ngan impera. Tangi aso. Gogo lou. Mosita. Ena ruku ni kau vela tai. De re re ta digu. E dren dren tiku no mu biuta na lawa kiva. Ke ena mbuta mbutaku. O vea suri tiku kao chisu sa kalau ngata ko irna dau tagi. Sa kalungata, ko ira, era, musita na nondre i bolo bolo da. Dere ira yo sa arui ngunu ngunu yang gona si vio, si ni wili bolo tambu rao diku. Obe kai veiko, kao chisu, sa kalungata, ko ira, na dau tagi. Masu langa buana kalobe, poka le mutaka veiko na dau tagi. Mo tagi aso taka, buana turanga. Zama tala me tagi aso taki, tala tala, romada. Menda tangi vaka, ni sa la veti vaka lewu na i bolo bolo dae burubur. Roma dana kaka apolo, roma wase duot kine tinka walu. 
Ni sa mga teke lai mai lo mala ngi na dudu ni kalo ke nonon ri vol vol da ke nga ke nonon ri tau de dudu na tamata. Er sa ta roba nai vanga vubuli dina e nai vala vala tau a dudu dudu vanga lo loma. Na lewu ni ke na vanga beni beni nai vol vol da e vur vur vi akala mani. E de sa ta roba ti ko ke na ka dudu dudu me vanga ya ngata ke na ka dudu dudu me vanga e zuri. Da rei da na. Na kena sa kama ka kata kata zaki tiko nga na kena Mwaka mwene mwene na i wala wala da E na tigi na tigi na matungo Lago so mwira Le ka tiko kwa ni Rasa mwaka tani taka na tangani Rasa mwaka tani taka na elewa Tangani mwaka tani tangani Elewa mwaka na elewa E na kaya sa mwaka lo lomo kino Se wala nga na kwa ya wakal mani Buka la tiko na lenga lewe ndai ndai Se na vi kaya sa ayato tinu kwa lomo lutu baka risto Sa seka ni mwaka tautaki Na donu kena thala Na ndina kena lasu mwene woltabu Sapa kata tahu tak ki enak kanga endi nak kena kaya endo ni nunggu bakas sama. Ya tu mungkin nunggu ni nak pulen bora bat. Nona sapa vakuwe bura bura eni bola tabu. Enak French Revolution. Gay vaka durian tak enak goddess of reason nak kalu elawa ya. Gay vaka kau ta enak tol lomu ni tol ni salam yang berani se. Sangga ya tu nana goddess of reason. Se liberty. Oh ya, sa seka ni vaka tau taki na rara mo kena butu buto na iyo kena seka mo na kakane mo tabu sa vaka tau taki ena kanga ona no mo ni donu veiko kanga en donu veiko sa donu ya sa donu ya ka sa basi ka kina na kara vaka to kaya muka skepticism sa seka ni sa loma loma ruo taki na imo tabu ya kaya di na se seka en to donu veita lai rara roki na rata mata se seka he mo kalma ni gona kaya vina kato chisu karisto abe mo siti ya utiko Na wano wala loma, enda sa tuki na sangandrevi enda na kaukua tani. Sangandrevi enda na kaukua mwe dhaki. Na reitha na nonda sa rui na nubi kenda nga na tamata. Enda sa rui kodho kodho. Kanda sa biuta enda kunda na kalo. Omba latini kalo mbeka ya sanga ni laurai. Sa rao ni sole vio na ivola tara. Mwa vaka edhora ka vii na nubi vii kawai taki nga vaka tamata. Vina ka wala loma dundu ya vaka lmani. Ni adho tiko kina tamata. Vaka lmani. Mena kata langa tisu minta masulaka. Ni saa seaga ni. Yalo molu molu butu wa mura mura. Sefoka molu molu butu ki koya. Ena ruku ni kobe altai. Ni da seaga ni da sila ka bibi voro. Ena mata ni kalou. Ena saa foka tarana ka ukoni butu buto. Na ka ukoni te voro. Me vua viritaka na nona itutu na kalou vei kenda. Wata kei viti. Mena kala mani. Na kalou vei vina kata minta tagi vaka vaka ka ukou. Mena kala kaya adu viru mwesi nili. Sa me veli utai ko chispele bote kei api. Sa kau lewe na profite ni kalou. Na wana itutu na kalou. Ka sa yadho mai na ivola vola tau kili kili. Ke ni karua. Menda masulaka katangi asu taka. Ni sa vaka mene mene na mata kauwe burbura. Rungwa dhana kaya kawi skeli. Wase tina kama ati kine lima. Me utaura na mwata ga li sire li ena lomandra nga. Ni rasa ya lo vaka taini vi yao. Ko ira kedha nga. Ena vuku ni nondra mata kau. Me vaka mene mene i tiko na mata kau e na loma ni nonra i tiko tiko na Israeli. E na lako e na wailotu, e na lai lotu, e na vali ni soro, ni na lesuma i tiko i vali so na mata kau la lai. Ke la ni kua, mura mura e na saati u kina. E na rani seka ni tiko veiko na mata kau la lai, ko e na do garabu tiko na gauna ya, ko tiko ni tiko. Se orto u mai efe so na mura na mata kau. Rai rai e na tiko tale so na mata kau e rao ni na garabu tiko. Yu na kata tiko mbeka na rogo, mata kau mbeka ni kakana, e lewa. Kena vi no muilavo, na ngito, na kao tale itaka muilevo, kasa atiko e muri na kalou. Kaya atiko vi kendo iskeli. Ni rasa ya lo vaka taini vi yao, kwa ira kitha nga, ya na vuku ni nondra mata kau. Kela na mata kau, ya na vaka vuna na vuki taini me vua na kalou. Ni duna kako sa vaka bene bene ya tale itaka, kako sa nga drema. Sa ika ruwa ni kana kalou, ya kao iskeli, ya na vaka vuna mo ya lo vaka taini. Ya na vaka vuna mo biuta na kalou, ya na vaka vuna. Mo lotu tu nga no mo vaka sama sa tu tani. Sa na vaka iso somi taka na kalou ya na no mo bula. Sa na vaka yaka taka na yadha ni lotu. Me yadha mo nga ya na vaka rao ni bula sa tu tani. Ya na kame tangi asu tagi ta vingu. Ya na kame tangi asu tagi ta mangu na tinangu. Nga nengu. Rangadho. Na marau ya na iso somi ni tangi asu. Na mosi ke na gongo lou ke na rarawa. Ome katiko viko, sa kena nga unamesa visa unayvokarao ni nonda masu masu. 
Visau ni mga rau ni nonda mga take kere mo ana kalou. Visau ni mga rau ni nongo biwa kai ni mate kena kalou. Me sa kaku ni tanga wale tunga me mo kana isulu me kaya sa la viki mai loma e na boto tui tui ni wuto ko e viki lai kena mate kena nave wa sala sala ni biwa kai ni mate kena turanga. Ramada na marau e na ezovira oira e na dau tagi kau te vita e na sa me wa se dono rosa ngamu kau ni tiki ne lima kena tiki ne wano. Oira era sa tangilako ni era sa kakamuraki, era na serenga ni era sa tata musuka. O koe sa lako ya ni katangivoli, ni sa kauta na sor ni sila, ena lesu tele mai ena marau. Ni sa kauta vata kai mai, na nona vei vau sila. Vea kalamani. Na kalau wana senga mwagandoni waka wala taka, na wai ni mata e turu. Na kalau ada siapa bukan tu ni, bukan kawal taka. Na gonggolau na tagi kena mosi. Bela tu ni sah, bukan lau kau. No iko, o sah siapa ni via kay vur vur go. Sah vina kata, mosa leo ni mati ni tuwa allah malangi. Lele indo pegan orang ni mui file gono go. Sah di di buti gono kan meruana. Sah di di buti gono file danis. Sah di di buti gono dono gono tangani. Kau sah siapa ni taruh di kau rauti gumi kena. Se re re na luve mo beka. O gai be vosa ni vua sa vosa vi sa umai. Sa vuka mai na keni sa u kau kaua. Se re re vosa ni sa oso oso tunga na Facebook. Oso oso tunga na nona computer. Oso oso tunga na nona daka daka. O be vuka mo sutiko. Tangi aso mo ki koya. Go go low mo ki koya. Vutu go te ki koya. Masu la ki koya. Vesa utaka na maso, mesa kakuwa ni kena yivala vala kwa ndoza, kama tu mwe liu. O vesa uritiko, teka mwini kwa mesa vesa unu mwe yivala vala. Ni vei taratara vati kei koe na turanga. Kala mwela ndama, sa kai tiko chisu, o ira era kaka mburaki ena wei ni mata, era na tata musuki ena marau. No mutangi ene senga vangandoni vaka wala tako chisu. No mutangi ene senga vangandua, ni vaka nanda kweo chisu karisto. Kaku ni zola ndua ndua tathiku. Kaku ni zola ndua ndua na wakangu. Derere saru imbalavu no mulis ni kere kere vwa na kalu. Sobe kena kau kere tu kata wayanga sara. Kemu kaya loo rebo vunaka. Kanga ni kodo kodo kanga ya mbole tiiko nga vwa kate kiko. Ie dai dai. Sa vio na kata na kalu. Mo tangi aso vwa kau kuo vwa. Rere erto mbeka no muneibwes. Oyandra maya na mataka ni kuo. Erto u. So kalu tiko kina mata kau. Wajar bagai bagai mai, yang mesti tak dikua. Yang tahu sah, viva la tu yang bukan di mata ini mai nampungi. Orang tua ngau nampak sah ravi orang tua tua ngau. Orang tua ngau nampak talno tak kembdo, nampi tu neba sah dorakan nampi bukan di mata ini ada kat sini. Oh, berkerja kita tinggu, masuk laka, tangi asuh laka, gogo low laka, butung utak ayat mati ni kalau belat ayat orang orang bos ni alah sah kaya tu, ni rena bukan tinggui. Rongada, na mai viu a se tira quando o tiquinho rosa com bulca valu, dou lá como é viu, o i que mundo o vacaia andou a nossa oda cada lata nem dola dola bibi, a uma vaca de o i que mundo, vaca tangar viu não não o i voa, vaca tangar vi, que o vaca tangar vi que mundo não não o i voa, que bulca viu não sai, alô malu calmo malu, dona cunha que não não vaca de o i alô mundo, nem sai rau rau não não o i voa, que mamanda não não o i dola dola, o ia, na visão de tirar o malu não o i viu quando cua, vaca tangar voa. Sulit buat, na nona mosi sa siromai enam bukum. Oiko, mosi tetap lengan, na tadimu, na nganemu, na lubemu. Nui takkan, ni enam bukai kau naturangan, mondo na dau tangi, gonggolau, mosi kibua. Tama kima min dau lolo mak, bukai kima min kuah, me kima min sam, gonggolau baka, tangi baka, masulak baka kuah. Na vi kasa ada buka bulit, bulit bulit kima min kena ni kima min bola, cincu ni bola. Amen, amen. Thank you.